The ASPN High School Football Game of the Week is brought to you by America West Airlines, Phoenix's hometown airlines, serves more than 70 destinations coast to coast, including Mexico and Canada. And by Cox Communications, quality you can count on. From Bruce Harper Stadium on the campus of Tempe High School, it's the biggest game of the year in the East Sky region as the Dons of Coronado High School of Scottsdale come to call on the Buffaloes of Tempe High School. Hi, everybody. George Allen here along with Doug Gerlach. This should be a dandy tonight. The two top teams as of right now in the East Sky region go head-to-head -head this evening in a matter of contrasting styles. It should be very, very interesting. Let's take a look at the East Sky region standings, show you just how important this game is. For the Tempe Buffaloes, they come into this game ranked second in the state. They are perfect overall, and you see in the region they are unbeaten as well, 4-0. Coronado and Arcadia, 2-1 in the region. Coronado, 6-1 overall. Their only loss a couple of weeks ago to Gilbert. Arcadia is still going to have a lot to say about who wins this region because Arcadia has got Coronado next week and Tempe the following week at home. But for the time being, this is the key matchup. Indeed it is. We thought for a long, long time it looked as if these two teams were going to be headed to this game tonight, coming in, both of them, undefeated. But Coronado suffered a very surprising loss to Gilbert a couple of weeks ago. Nevertheless, in terms of the league championship, this could very well be the game for the league championship because if Coronado can beat Tempe while they're even in the loss column, of course, Coronado would have won the head-to-head -head match. Both of these teams know something about state championships. Coronado won a state title under Eddie Anderson 20 years ago, back in 1976. And, of course, Tempe wasn't that long ago. 1989, they shared the state championship in Class 4A with the Owls of Agua Fria. These have been two programs. Ironically, Coronado missed the playoffs last year, the first time in seven years they failed to qualify for the playoffs. Tempe made the playoffs last year, the first time in five years that they had made the playoffs. This year, they are both solid. For Tempe, the guy to keep your eye on, in addition to quarterback Fred Mortensen, who we'll see a little later, number one, Justin Taplin. He does everything for this football team. 15 touchdowns on the year. He will kill you as a pass receiver. Outstanding on kickoff and punt returns, and they even can use him on end around and reverses. He is a guy to really keep your eye on. He may be the ver most versatile player we will see all year, if not the most, certainly one of the most. He has scored three touchdowns rushing this year. He has nine touchdown receptions, and he scored two fumbles or two touchdowns on fumble returns. He does everything for this Tempe ball club, and of course we talked about Todd Mortensen. We'll talk a little bit about him a little bit later. 16 touchdown passes coming into this ball game. Coronado, it is a dynamic one-two punch out of the backfield. Probably as good a one-two running tandem as maybe any team in the state. Joel Huerta and Mike Mantle. Between the two of them, they must account for about 98% of the scoring for Coronado. As far as Mantle is concerned, he has scored about 13 touchdowns this year. Huerta has rushed for seven. He's another one. Can kill you on punts and kickoff returns. Put those uh, numbers together that you're looking at right now, their yardage, and it adds up to about a mile that those two have accumulated this year. One with an average per, game, uh, per carry of over seven yards. The other one zeroing in on ten. Both of them difficult to stop. Coaches in this ball game tonight, Tim McBurney for Tempe has been here a long time. Assumed the head coaching role back in 1990, and his team, of course, made the playoffs we mentioned a year ago, got all the way to the quarterfinals before losing to Ironwood. On the Scottsdale Coronado side of the picture, Joe Court, winning his coach in the history of Scottsdale High School football, 133 total wins coming into this one. Two good coaches. Two very good coaches who have proven themselves. They have good, solid programs. They seem to go in cycles a little bit. Tempe, as you mentioned, 89-90 playoff team, been out of the playoffs and got back last year. Coronado has been a consistent playoff contender, missed out last year, looking to go back again this year. So to set the table for you again, for Tempe, quarterback Todd Mortensen, outstanding performer, good size, throws the ball very well. Running back James Shaw could be a factor in this one tonight. Their leading rusher, and of course Justin Taplin, Mr. Do-Everything. For Coronado, Nick Poole, the quarterback, pulls the trigger. He will give it off to two outstanding running backs, Mike Mantle and Joel Huerta. This one should be a good one. We're glad you're with us on ASPN. We'll come back. We will set the scene with the flip of the coin and have the opening kickoff here at Bruce Harper Stadium. Tempe and Coronado in a moment. with us up here in the booth as it's Coronado and Tempe set to go on it in this key East Sky region matchup. 
Captains out at midfield for the flip of the coin for Tempe, Justin Taplin, Mike Washington, Dave Vaughn, and Jason Castile, the captains. And for Coronado, Brian Allen, Joel Huerta, and Jeremy Bennett. As you see them out there with the officiating crew, Hank Mancini is the referee, Lynn Quarter, the umpire, Alan Montoya, the linesman, Harold Foote, the line judge, and the back judge is Ken Wolf. Coronado 6-1 and one on the year. They're only lost two weeks ago to Gilbert. And Tempe has been perfect. They are 7-0 overall, 4-0 in the region. Buffaloes have won the toss, and they will defer their option to the second half. So Coronado will get the ball to start this ball game. Both schools have known great moments in the past. Tempe, back in 1971, Todd Mortensen's father, Fred, took his team down to Tucson at the U of A to play highly touted Tucson High and Tempe almost pulled off the upset. They beat, they lost to Tucson 20 to 14 in the title game. Tucson won it with a last minute touchdown. In 1983, Tempe lost to eventual state champion Mountain View in the first round of the playoffs. In 1980, under coach Jim Murphy, the Buffaloes got to the state semifinals before falling to Trevor Brown. And in 1989, Tempe finished 13 one and one, tied our free at 10 10 in the title game. And along the way, they beat 5A state champion McClintock. Coronado, they've known some great moments too. State champions in 1976, a team that went perfect that year, 13 and 0, beat South Mountain 17 12 in the title game. Eddie Anderson was the Coronado coach, ended a 16-year coaching career at Coronado with 101 wins. He was the first Scottsdale area coach to win 100 games. Assistant Tom Dahl then took over until 1982 when Joe Court assumed the reins, and Court now the winningest coach in Scottsdale history. Coronado's had some great teams. 1991 team went 11 and 2. Team that had Paul Fischero, who took his talents to Brown University. 1992 team had Rod Bear. We saw him over at Grand Canyon play some baseball. He was player of the year in baseball at Coronado High School. And Mike Mantle's brother, Kenny Mantle, was an outstanding running back at Coronado High School. There's Joe Court. 133 career wins coming into this one. Hoping his Dons are ready to go. To take a look at the alignment right now. You see Tempe there. Coronado 2 with a very tight alignment. We'll see if they break it for the kickoff. Back deep. Who else? Mantle and Huerta. The one-two punch of Coronado. Remember, Huerta has returned two punts for touchdowns this year, and he went 80 yards on a kickoff against Apache Junction for a touchdown. We're set to get this one underway from Bruce Harper Stadium. Dave Bond will kick off, and Bond scripts it along the ground. It is covered by the Dons. They do not want to kick the ball deep to either Huerta or Mantle, and you can bet Coronado doesn't want to kick it to Taplin either tonight. There's Lucero, number 81, who fell on the kickoff. It bounced off of him, and then he had to go back to put it away. Nick Poole, the quarterback for the Dons of Coronado. Poole so far this year has scored six touchdowns rushing. There you see, Nick, and he has thrown for three touchdowns as well. He is only a junior. Brings him up, first and 10 from the 35-yard line. Coronado with the ball, give it off to Mantle. Mantle trying to go wide, can't get there. He's got no gain as he is hit by a host of Buffalo tacklers. It'll be second and 10. Offensively for Coronado, in addition to Poole, in the backfield we mentioned, Joel Huerta, Mike Mantle, Josh Blocker, the flanker, the uh, split end is John Williams, and you see the tight end, Brett Treble. Across the line, Espinosa and Jeremy Bennis. The center position, Joe Wood, and also Warren and Olsen on the line as well. Poole running the football, and he's got five up to the 40-yard line on a nice carry by Nick Poole. It'll be third and five. Defensively, the Buffaloes of Tempe, and they have been tough this year with Mueller and two of the defensive tackle. Oh, has he got some numbers. Humberto Fuentes and Castile up front. Linebackers, Tucker, Mike Washington, a good one, and Morris. And in the secondary for this ball club, it's Brian Cavanaugh, Bond, Justin Taplin, and Trujillo. Tough defense for Tempe. Third down, five Dons from the 40, their own 40, first quarter of play. Give the ball off to Huerta. Huerta trying to get to the first down marker. He won't get there. He's going to be a few couple of yards shy. It's going to be fourth down for the Dons, and they'll have to kick the football away. Huerta got about almost three yards on that carry. Taplin and Kavanaugh came up to make the tackle, stopping Coronado on its first possession of the night, forcing a punt. 
So Mike Mantle will do the punting for Coronado. Mantle standing back inside his own 30 to await the snap from center and the ever dangerous Justin Taplin, one of the deep backs for Tempe, along with Gabe Trujillo. Clean snap. Mantle steps in with wobbly kick. Taplin's going to get a return. He feels the ball. He's looking for running room. Reverses. Comes the other way. Taplin sidestepping up over the 45 for the 35 out to the 38-yard line. Boy, you hold your breath when he takes the punt because anything can happen. Not a bad effort by Taplin. Tempe had a punt return set up on the far sideline, but Taplin could not get over there. There's nobody over here to help him. He made it all on his own. So the Buffaloes go to work first and 10. First time they've touched the ball tonight. They're led by Todd Mortensen, their senior quarterback. 6'4", 200 pounder. You take a look at him there. He is a good one. He's thrown for 16 touchdowns this year and over 1,100 yards. Pitch the ball back. Opening play of the game. Sweep and a gain of about two out to the 40-yard line. James Shaw, the tailback carry, leading rusher for Tempe, comes into the game with 703 yards rushing, six and a half yard average, and he scored six touchdowns. Offensively, Mike Washington, along with Shaw, Gabe Trujillo, Justin Taplin, and Jason Castile, outstanding tight end. Up front, Munoz, Mueller, DeMichael, A.J. Tucker, and Humberto Fuentes for Tempe. Second down and eight after a gain of two on the run by Shaw. Give the ball off to Shaw again. He is hit by Brian Allen and stacked up right at the line of scrimmage. Allen, a six foot, 200 pound senior, met him head on and stopped him in his tracks. They give him a gain of one on forward progress. Third and seven. Now, Allen from his linebacker position came up and filled in the hole very nicely to stop that for next to no gain. Allen had a fumble recovery against Thunderbird and he had a pass interception earlier this year in a win over Westview. It is third and seven passing situation. Mortensen, great size for a quarterback. 6-4, play action, drops, looks, throws, got his man. Bond, Bond over the middle is dragged down by Allen at the 45-yard line, the 44 of Coronado. That's a first down. Tempe sent three receivers out and broke them off towards the near sideline. Two of them were recovered. Bond was not. 15 yards on the reception. They play action to Shaw. Mortensen, good protection, lets it fly, and Bond open. And he's there for the reception. So the ball now on the 44 of Coronado. The initial first down of the football game. And the ball off on the inside handoff. And again, it's Allen there to trip up the ball carrier. Number 23, Gabe Trujillo. Actually, George, I think that was Huerta that came up who made, made the tackle on that play. And if he had not, that could have been a big game. Trujillo was a flanker, had an 80-yard touchdown run in the win over Apache Junction, and had a 19-yard touchdown pass reception in the win over Chaparral. Shaw goes wide, finds running room, and Shaw is close to a first down. They give him first down yardage. He is inside the 35, and from here, it looks like he's got enough for the first down. It is. First down, Tempe driving the first time they've touched the ball tonight. Tempe unbeaten, 7-0 coming in. Ranked second in the state behind Tucson Sabino. Tempe, a quarter finalist in the state playoffs a year ago before losing in overtime in a great football game to Ironwood. First down, Buffs, and right side of the line jump, Jason Castile, the tight end, move before the snap, and that'll cost him five. That game a year ago that we talked about, that quarterfinal game, we televised over at Shadow Mountain. It was a great game in overtime. Jamal Garland scored the winning touchdown for Ironwood, but that was a game where you and I commented throughout, he never got the ball to Justin Taplin during the ball game. Here's the jump on the right side. You see Castile beat the count right there, so they move it back to the 39. Well, and Ironwood went on from that game to get to the state championship right. game. Won there next week in the semis and finally fell to eventual state champion Scottsdale Saguaro in the title game. First and 15 buffs. Mortensen throwing. Got Taplin over the middle. Taplin hit by Huerta and taken down at the 20-yard line. That's a 19-yard pickup on the pass play. First down, Buffalo. Nothing fancy about that play. Taplin split wide to the left, came, came down, then angled across in front of the Coronado defenders. And it was an easy pitch and catch between Mortensen and Taplin right here. Taplin's so dangerous, you got to give him some room. And if Coronado cannot get any kind of a rush on tonight, they could be in trouble. 
Got to try and force Mortensen to throw it before he wants to. First and 10, Buffalo's on the move. Mortensen looking, throwing, got a man, complete down to the 10 yard line, Taplin again. Huerta there to make the tackle. And Mortensen put that ball right on the money. Tamplin went down, then uh, broke, uh, squared out, broke to the sideline, and Mortensen put it right into his pocket. See where they mark the football right at the 10 yard line. It's gonna be first and goal right on the 10. So they've gotta get the touchdown. They cannot pick up a first down without getting a touchdown. First down and goal from the 10, and whistles blow before that snap. Justin Taplin, what a ball play. He's carried the ball only eight times from scrimmage this year, but he scored three touchdowns. Procedure call gonna go against the Buffaloes, move it back to the 15. But coming in, Taplin had caught 37 passes for 600 yards and nine touchdowns. Brilliant performer, outstanding track performer, over here on this Tempe ball football team. Three for three is Mortensen for 44 yards, three first downs on this drive now for Tempe. It is first and goal from the 15. I will tell you, neither team with outstanding kicking credentials if you're thinking possible field goal. Shaw breaks to the outside and he's knocked down at the 10. He got five on that run. The middle was clogged and he found some room to the outside. And he got some help from A.J. Tucker, number 51, over on the end as he slid down the line trying to find some space to run. Tucker was able to throw a block that helped sealed off the end and get him around the corner. Four carries, 15 yards now for Shaw. Shaw ran for 90 yards and had a 31-yard touchdown run in the win over Thunderbird earlier this year. And he also ran for 147 yards and two touchdowns in a 28-20 win over Chaparral. He is an outstanding running back, James Shaw. Mortensen wants to throw, looks, gets it away, hits Castile the tight end, and he's upended by Huerta right after a few yards of a game, but it's gonna bring up third down now. And remember, it's third and goal. They have to score 522 to go in the first quarter, no score. It looked as if that play was at first intended to go to Gabe Trujillo, who was lined up wide to the right side and angled across. Mortensen did not deliver him the football, and Trujillo standing after the play was over in the end zone looked a little bit frustrated that he was not given a chance to catch the ball. Mike Mantle, one-on-one -on -one coverage on Taplin now, and he's looking for Taplin, going wide open, touchdown. Taplin got all by himself and hauls in the touchdown pass from Mortensen. And the Buffaloes are on the board. Oh, he was all alone. When he got into the end zone, he made a little move as if he was going to cut inside. The Coronado defender went with the fake. Taplin went to the outside and was standing there all alone. Tenth touchdown reception of the year for Justin Taplin. It is his 16th touchdown overall on the season. And the Buffaloes on the board first. They lead 6-0. And now the try for point. Steven Thompson, kick on the way, and it is good. 4.58 to go, first quarter. And the Buffaloes of Tempe take their opening possession and march it down the field to take a 7-0 lead. Touchdown pass going from Mortensen to Taplin. And here it is again. You will see how open Justin Taplin is right there. Nobody near him in the end zone. Pump fake by Mortensen again has time. Well, we don't get to see the move that Taplin made, but he caused Coronado defensively to go inside, giving a move as if he were headed that way. And then when he came back to the outside, it was too late to recover. Boy, he is a good one. Justin Taplin. Remember the name because you may hear him mention in big time college football down the road. He is outstanding. The thing with, with Tempe is they are so tough to defend because he is not their only weapon. He may be their best weapon, but when you got a running back like Shaw and a quarterback like Mortens, an outstanding tight end in Castile, and this team also is happy to have back Mike Washington, who missed a good portion of this season with injury. He is back now, makes them that much tougher. So it's 7-0 Tempe, and now Coronado to try and answer. Dave Vaughn will kick off, and again, Berta and Mantle are deep, but do not expect them to touch the ball. On that drive, 
Remember, Taplin had the 12-yard punt return to start that drive off. Line drive kick is down on the 45-yard line. Good hands team right there. And that's Orlando Espinosa who took the ball on a line. Well, he... So Tempe leading takes the opening possession of their offensive series, goes 62 yards in 10 plays. They eat up five minutes of the clock, and Taplin falls in the touchdown pass. No, Espinosa with those good hands gives his team very good field. He sure does. Up and over the 45. We'll call it the 46-yard line. Nick Poole quarterbacking. Give it to Huerta on a sweep. Huerta cuts it inside. Joel Huerta with good yardage into Tempe territory. Down at the 47 or 48-yard line. Big gain on first down of about seven by Huerta, the junior running back. You know, when that play got to the end, got to the corner, it looked as if it wasn't going anywhere. Here Take it another is look again. at it, because Tempe had come up. They pull 66 Olsen. He's over there. 71 Bennis also throws a block. Wirtz cuts in behind him and gets a nice game for his effort. Six yards on the carry. Ball in Tempe territory. Cool. Call signals. Give it a Mantle. Mike Mantle tripped up and dropped a yard shy of a first down by Mike Washington. If Washington does not make that tackle, that could be a very big gainer. And at a minimum, it would have been a first down. Mantle, a senior. His brother was tremendous. Kenny Mantle went on to Scottsdale Community. Kenny Mantle, as a sophomore, went over 800 yards rushing. As a junior, went over 1,300. And as a senior, ran all up and down the city of Scottsdale. Almost 2,000 yards for Mantle as a senior. Pool on a keeper. He's got the first down. Ran the option that time, or the, and kept it, pulled it out of the stomach of the first back, threw and kept it. Nick Poole. So they start the clock again. Coronado's got a first down. The ball on the 43. This is Coronado's game. Ball control, and keep it away from Tempe. They trail 7-0, but it's still early in this one. By the way, on that last drive that Tempe had, Taplin was incredible. We'll tell you his number, just him alone on that drive in a moment. Poole barks out signals. Pitch it to Mantle. Mantle on a sweep. Looking for running room. He is met and dropped. Washington was there and also Brian, coming up with Cavanaugh. Brian Cavanaugh, number nine, right there. He would not be blocked. And that play goes nowhere. Good play that time by the Buffalo defense. Mantle on a sweep will stop right there. Try to cut it inside. Washington's there to plug it up, and then Kavanaugh finishes it off. Nice shot there from the end zone. So Washington 24 just keep drifting and drifting. He gets him low. Kavanaugh gets him high. Loss of one. Second down 11. Don. First quarter. 7 0 Tempe. Huerta in motion. Pull the signal. Pull draw play. Give it a Mantle. Mantle up the middle is inside the 40, down to about the 39 yard line of Tempe. So that time they send Huerta in motion to the near side of the field, and they run the draw with Mantle. Now the thing is, Coronado is not known as a passing team. So Tempe, by all rights, should not be deceived on a draw play. Mantle, the ball carrier, missed last season, suspended due to rules violations. But he gained as a sophomore when he ran in the same backfield with his brother Kenny, 700 plus yards and scored seven touchdowns. Play action. Poole wants to throw. Look, throwing down the field, overthrown. Trying to hit the wideout, number 86. And that's Josh Blocker, the six foot junior. Good double coverage down there by Tempe. So it's going to be fourth down, and the Dons are going to have to punt of the way. Fourth and six from the 39 of Tempe. Nick Poole has thrown for three touchdowns this year. The first punt for Mike Mantle went 31 yards. Remember, Taplin returned it 12 yards. On that opening touchdown drive, Taplin had three catches for 34 yards, including the touchdown. This one goes straight up in the air, no distance. Takes a side bounce over to the 27, where it'll be down right there. So only a 12-yard punt by Mike Mantle. 
And you wonder how much havoc the wind is causing down on the field because it's been blowing all day long. Actually, it's died down entirely right Pretty now. Pretty calm right now from the flagpole anyway. All day it has been blowing quite stiffly, 35, 40 miles an hour. But right now, no breeze at all. Next week, St. Mary's and Brophy. Site Phoenix College. We hope you'll be with us. There should be an overflow crowd for that one. Remember, Brophy has not beaten St. Mary's in 16 years. Mortensen tonight, five for five, 54 yards, and a touchdown. This is Shaw, Shaw looking for running room, not much there. He got about three, just shy of the 30-yard line. A minute and a half to go, first quarter. Seven nothing, Tempe leading. Opening possession, they drove 62 yards on 10 plays, and a, touch yard, a touchdown pass from Mortensen to Taplin, got him on the board. Thompson's point after, made it seven nothing. Taplin now goes far, wide to the far side of the field, double wide out now. James Stewart also over there. And the ball off, and again, not much running room. Coronado's running defense has been pretty stiff this year. Coronado coming into this game had rushed for almost 2,000 yards themselves, and they had given up 1,000 yards less to the opposition. Garcia gets credit for the tackle on that play, but give an assist to Bennis. He was very fast off the line of scrimmage, got into the backfield, occupied his blocker enough to disrupt the flow of the play and force it back inside so Garcia was in position to make the tackle. Key play here for Coronado. It's third and six. Don's trying to hold and get the ball back in what should be decent field position. Double wide out, far side of the field. Welton Davis, the lone back. Out patterns, complete to Taplin. Mantle falls down, Taplin spins, and he's out near midfield. That's a first down. He's dropped at the 48-yard line, first down Buffalo. Coronado tried to bring a linebacker to get some pressure on Mortensen, but Mortensen with a very quick drop, just a couple of steps, and he fires. And when Taplin catches the ball, Taplin already has the first down. 16-yard pickup. Taplin right there. Mike Mantle had some trouble with his footing, but regained himself enough to make the tackle. So the Buffaloes leading and with the football. Elton Davis spinning and turning, and Bennis stands him up, and he's dropped for a loss on the play. Davis looking for yardage, and it wasn't there, and Jeremy Bennis came up and finally finished him off. And 85 is Justin Peterson, who was also in on the tackle. Boy, he hit a wall at the line of scrimmage. That's the end of the first quarter here at Bruce Harper Stadium at Tempe High. Our score, the Buffalo 7, the Dons nothing. The beauty of football on TNT is that so often a man is called upon to do something beyond his capabilities. Beautiful! And he does it. Touchdown! Oh, man! The NFL on TNT Sunday nights. Don't miss a game. A sideline seat to NFL football action is yours every Sunday night on TNT and Cox Cable. I received the call around four. She was desperate. The kids were yelling, and Grandpa was threatening to steal the remote. That's when I called Cox. I suggested she hook up her second set to an additional outlet. We quickly assessed the situation and made her second TV a Cox Cable TV. Now we can't live without it. The kids can watch Nickelodeon here while Grandpa watches the Weather Channel in the den. It's raining in Buffalo! Thanks, Cox Cable. Basic programming is always free on your additional outlets. 7-0 Buffalo's on top as we start the second quarter. The only touchdown, Mortensen to Taplin. An eight-yarder for the score. Justin is getting toweled down on the sidelines. And Tempe with the football as play resumes in up near midfield after a 16-yard pass play going to Taplin. Just want to remind you that Phoenix Coyotes hockey coming your way on Cox Sports on October the 28th. They'll be at Montreal to take on the Canadians. You'll see that game live at 5.30. Coyotes and Canadians. And the ball off. Shaw looking for running room. Nowhere to go. Allen up from his linebacking spot to make the stop and drag him down. Gain of maybe a yard or so on the play. Only touchdown drive. 62 yards in 10 plays. The first time Tempe touched the ball. 
James Shaw, seven carries, 22 yards. Dons have kept him in check pretty well. He came into the game averaging six and a half yards to carry. He's the leading rusher for the Buffalo. Third and nine. And again, Taplin's out wide to the far side. Single coverage, where to on it? Mortensen, pump fakes on the drop. Looking, throwing long, got a man downfield, and it is complete. Pulled in, and it's gonna be a touchdown for Tempe, James Stewart. Structures a marker down at the line of scrimmage. Stewart on the pass reception, 52 yards. We'll see if the touchdown holds up. In fact, there are markers on both sides at the line of scrimmage. I think somebody moved. We're gonna see. It's gonna come back. So a 52-yard strike from Mortensen to Stewart will come back. Boy, Mortensen's got an arm, doesn't he? Oh, he sure does. He can really throw the ball. It was an illegal shift on the line of scrimmage. So it's an illegal shift, and they'll move it back. And the Don's given a reprieve for the time being. So they'll step it off now. It'll be third and 14 from the 44. Coronado has got to find a way to get some pressure to Mortensen, or it could be a long night. Tempe three for three on third down conversion so far tonight. Welton Davis, the lone running back. Quick drop, and that time Venice got to him. Venice and a host of his friends finally get to Mortensen and drop him for a loss. It'll be fourth down coming up, and Tempe will have to kick. But Brad Don right up the middle, over the center. Somehow got through. I don't know if somebody went to sleep on the Tempe line, but look, Don is 72, and he's in, he's across right now. Nobody right. touched him. He's the first man, disrupts Mortensen, and here's Bennis to finish it off. So now, Dave Bond will punt. He averages 34 yards a kick, and he will kick it away from Huerta, and it gets a nice bounce inside the 25 to about the 23. So about a 35-yard punt by Bond, just about his average on the year. The Dons go back to the attack first and 10 with 10 and a half minutes to go first half. 7-0 Tempe. A win by Tempe tonight, and it's a giant step toward the region title. Next week, Tempe's on the road. Tough game. They travel to Tucson to meet Tucson Saguaro, and they wrap up their season in two weeks against Arcadia at Arcadia. Coronado after tonight will travel to Arcadia next week and then close out the regular season at home against Desert Mountain. First down from the 23. Hand the ball off to Huerta. Huerta cuts it back up the middle. Joel Huerta, he's in the open. Huerta at the 50. John cuts it back inside of the 45 of the 43. Big run by Huerta. Oh, a huge running. Is he ever quick? He made the cut in the backfield and like a shot was through the line of scrimmage, beyond the line, and into the open field. 33 yards on the run by the junior running back, Joel Huerta. Boy, he is quick. I've watched this youngster through grammar school and middle school, and he can scoop. Don's needed a play like that to get back in this thing. Couple of wide outs, and the ball off the middle, Mike Mantle, here goes the other tandem, and Mantle's inside the 30 to the 28 of Tempe. That's another first down. 15 yards on the run by Mantle. Coronado is acting as if it needed a quarter just to get, uh, just to get accustomed to the surroundings. Now they have a feel for the game, and here they go. So weird up for 33 and Mantle for 15. Nice block by Olsen. Did you see him pull and execute his block, helping open the big hole up the middle for Mantle? Poole looks over the defense. The junior quarterback barks out signals, movement along the front, and a jump on defense. And we'll see what the penalty marker is. Well, Tempe was definitely across the line. The question is whether or not the Buffaloes will pull. Hank Mancini conferring with his officials. Offside, Buffalo. So that'll put it down to the 23-yard line. And here it is again on the line. Poole barks out the signals. And up front, might have been Tua, Michael Tua, the defensive tackle who jumped. Too eager to get going. It cost him five yards. 7-0 Buffalo. Coronado threatening. 
Tempe for Markoff for 20 yards so far in the ball game, penalty wise. Up the middle, Mantle with his head down. Mantle crashes to about the 21. He's going to come up about three yards shy of first down yardage. Clock running with nine minutes and 10 seconds to go till halftime. Third down, or second down coming up. They had the penalty mark off before. Deepest penetration of the game now for Coronado. Ball just shy of the 21 yard line of 10 P. Double wide out near side of the field. Setbacks, Berta and Mantle. Play action. Pool gonna keep. Pool on a roll. Pool cuts it back inside. Pool's got a first down to the 15 yard line. Nick Pool on the carry. Pool really adds a nice dimension to this Coronado offense. The defense has to be so concerned about Huerta and Mantle, and a pool can do this kind of play every now and then to really keep them honest. It not only uh, it makes things a little bit easier for Huerta and Mantle. Nice block and a nice cutback there by Poole to get the first down. The Dons are on the 15-yard line of Tempe. It is first down and 10 with 8 minutes and 20 seconds to go in the half, and the Buffaloes leading 7-0. Motion. Hand the ball off to Mantle. Mike Mantle, he's inside the 10, he's inside the 5, he's down to about the 3. It is first and goal, Coronado. He doesn't do that without a block thrown by Huerta on the end. Huerta led him, executes a block on the right end, and that helps Mantle scoot right by. Watch Huerta right there. Excellent block by Huerta. He got the block down on Matt Morris, the linebacker. And it allowed Mantle to get inside the five. First and goal, Dons, 7.50 to go. You see Mantle's numbers on the night. Joe Court looking on from the far sideline. His team threatening to go in and tie this ball game. Poole gives to Mantle. Mantle head down, spinning and turning down to about the two where he stacked up. Second down, goal to go. Mike Mantle. 1,153 yards, averaging nine and a half yards a carry coming in. Scored three touchdowns and ran for 168 yards in the win over Thunderbird. Ran for 176 yards and three touchdowns in the win over Westview. Went for 206 yards and three touchdowns against Apache Junction, including runs of 50 and 62 yards for touchdowns. Second and goal, Pool keeps head down to the goal line. Is he there? No signal. He's about a foot shy of the goal line. It's going to be third down coming up. Third and goal. He did get a signal. Unfortunately, it's from one of his teammates, and that doesn't count. So the clock continues to run. Brian Allen brings the play in from Joe Court. Allen, a six-foot, 200-pound senior. It is third and about a foot to go for the Dons. Guerta comes out of the ball game. This is the eighth play of this drive coming up. In the backfield, Mantle and Allen, quarterback keeper, Nick Poole, the goal line, did he get in, touchdown. Yes. Nick Poole on the keeper, his seventh touchdown of the year. He didn't get it by much, Tool was right there, almost had him stacked up, but the uh, fortunate thing for Poole and the Dons was that Poole didn't have very far to go. It is 7-6. Mike Mantle to try the extra point to tie it up. Thus far in the season, season 17 point after touchdowns for Mike Mantle. Out of the hold of pool. <laughs> Snap, ball down, kick on the way, it's blocked. The kick is blocked, penalty marker goes down late. Maybe a hold by the interior line for Coronado. We'll see what it is. Plays seem to take a long time developing. Ball down and not a whole lot of height on the no. kick by Mantle, and it was blocked. Procedure call against Coronado. It'll be declined. So it'll be declined. Here's a question for you. When's the last time you saw a kicker kick straight on? As Mantle did right true. there. So there's timeout on the field with 6.27 to go in the first half. And Tempe leading seven to six. Not much room for Nick Poole to operate on this keeper. Two is number 50. 
He's, he's right there. Nobody blocked him. He was right there to meet Poole. But Poole able to bend in there just enough. Poole following his center, Joe Wood, to the goal line. A six-foot, 280-pound senior. So we have a one-point game now. The battle for the top spot in the East Sky region. Tempe and Coronado. These two schools started playing on a regular basis in 1989 after about a five-year hiatus. And you remember in 1989, Tempe shared the state championship with Awafria. Tempe's record that year was 13-1-1. Their only loss that season came to Coronado. And it was right near the end of the season at Coronado, Tempe got their revenge in the playoffs when they knocked off Coronado in the quarterfinals. That happened to be Coronado's only loss that year, was in the playoffs. The kickoff is going to go deep, and it's going to go. Fielding the ball is Jarvis Watkins, and Watkins comes out over the 25 to about the 28-yard line. So that time they did kick it deep, and Watkins brings it back. Jarvis Watkins was averaging about 17 yards on four kickoff returns prior to that one. Well, from Coronado's standpoint, a good turn of events. The Don stopped Tempe on their last possession, got, got a sack on Mortensen on the last play to force the punt, and then you see what they did when they got the ball back, going 76 yards in just eight plays. So now Tempe trying to answer. Mortensen gives the ball up to Shaw. And Shaw has a gain of a couple as he's out near the 30-yard line. Going to be second down coming up. Josh Kraxberger in on the tackle for the Dons of Coronado. Stay with us at halftime. Barry Sallenberger will visit with us. We'll discuss high school football. It is parents' night here at Tempe High tonight. Parents on the field prior to the ball game with the football players. Mortensen wants to throw, has time, going to air it out. Got a man down the field, but Mantle's there, and he picks it off. Mike Mantle, the interception. Mantle starts back. He's out over the 40. Mantle's out over midfield. He's down into Tempe territory. Mike Mantle to the 40-yard line of the Buffaloes. First down, Coronado on the turnover. Well, there is a flag down, but I believe it's going to go against Tempe. Mortensen underthrows this pass. It is indeed a procedure call against Tempe. That'll be refused, and here it is again. It was underthrown. Mantle is a step behind the receiver, Mixon, number three. But that's where the ball wound up, and now a nice return by Mantle, and the Dons in excellent shape with a good chance here to take the lead. Andre Mixon, the intended receiver, a six-foot-one senior. Mantle, who had a pass interception last week in the end zone, Near the end of the Chaparral game, gets another one here tonight, and now Mike will go on offense. Wide out for 10 uh, for Coronado with Josh Blocker. They give it to Huerta. Huerta's trying to sweep, nowhere to run, puts his head down and gets back to the line of scrimmage. No game as the Buffaloes stack it up. It'll be second and ten. Well, almost, almost as soon, there, there's Mortensen, who just threw the intercepted pass, but almost as soon as he got the ball, Werther was looking at Tua, who had shot through. So now he has to worry about eluding Tua, and by the time he got to the end, there were other buffs that were ready to put him down. Here comes Nick Poole and his Dons up to the line of scrimmage. The ball's at the 41 of 10 feet following the turnover. Second down and ten. Play action. Poole to throw. Let's it go as he gets hit. Pass is incomplete. Double coverage, but a well-thrown ball. He tried to hit Josh Blocker, and that pass wasn't too far away from being complete. Back on coverage, that's Bond, number 33. This was a well-thrown ball by Poole. Trujillo, number 23, is also back there. Bond, the strong safety, comes over to help out, and prevents the pass from being completed. And this is going to be a big walk-off against the Dons. Holding puts the ball back in their own territory, now at the 46. Yeah. Going to be second down and 20 for the Dons now. Yeah. 
John Williams comes wide along with Blocker. Give the ball off to Mantle, and Mantle's hit, kicks away, still driving, and gets about three up near the 49-yard line. It's gonna be third down coming up and about 17. Tell you what kind of an effort Washington made on the play number 24. He made the initial contact at the line of scrimmage. The mantle bounced off, and Washington knocked to the ground as a result, got back up and came back to help out on the tackle. Mike Washington is going to help this ball club immensely down the stretch. He missed about four games. He is solid as a rock. Six foot, 205 pound senior, linebacker, and fullback. He is tough. They start Werda in motion. Cool barks out signals. Gets the ball out to Werda, and he overshoots him. It goes out of bounds. Actually, and they're going to call back a backward pass, right. which is going to be a rushing play, and it's going to be a loss on the play for Coronado. Actually, technically, it's a fumble, but it, more importantly, as far as Coronado is concerned, forget the, how you score it. It is a loss of yardage. So that pass going backwards out of bounds. It's fourth down. 3.59 to go to halftime. So after the turnover, Coronado loses ground and is going to have to punt the football away. Mantle will now kick it away, steps into it, gets a high kick. Going to bounce inside. Look at the bounce it takes. Oh, and a bounce for Coronado. Down to the 15-yard line of Tempe. So better than a 40-yard punt that time by Mike Mantle. Got a good roll, and the Buffs start deep in their own territory. Still plenty of time left to go in the first half. Three minutes, 47 seconds. That's plenty of time, especially with a quarterback like Morton's. We told you what the two great specialists can do. Taplin, who went 93 yards the first time he touched the ball this year. They opened the season, Tempe did, on this field against Washington High School, the Rams. And Taplin took the opening kickoff back 93 for a touchdown. Penalties fly. Also, he went 35 yards on a punt return against Gilbert for a touchdown. And on the other side of the coin, you've got Werda, who has returned two punts for touchdowns this year, 75 yards against Thunderbird and 78 against Chaparral. And Werda went 80 yards on a kickoff return against Apache Junction. So you've got game breakers on both sides. You'll see Tempe throw the ball more than Coronado. Coronado does not put it in the air very much. There's Tim McBurney. McBurney who took over the head coaching job of the varsity in 1990 here at this school. Pitched the ball back. Shaw on a sweep and Venice runs him down. Good play by Jeremy Venice. Good pursuit. Also a good effort on that play by number 44, or 42, I should say, Josh Kraxberger. Fought off a pretty good block to come over and help out. Here it is again. You see Bennis, Bennis spinning off the block. Nice move by Bennis. And then to run him down from behind with Kraxberger coming up. Second down and 14 to go for Tempe. Double wide out far side. Pitch the ball back, Lelton Davis, and Davis is hit and knocked down. Maybe got a yard, not much more. Davis came into the game with 14 carries for 182 yards, and he also has caught five passes for 55 yards and a touchdown. Davis's lone touchdown catch this year, a 32-yarder against Saguaro. Davis had a big game here on this field against Chaparral in a 28-20 Tempe win. He went 139 yards on only six carries in that ball game. Welton Davis. Third down nine. And Morton's is going to call timeout. 2.26 to go till halftime. Timeout Tempe. We'll be back to Bruce Harper Stadium in just a moment. Join us at Old Chicago Pasta and Pizza for the Valley's greatest Chicago experience. We have the best deep dish pizza in town. And be sure to bring the family, because the price is right. We pile the freshest ingredients high on our unique whole wheat or white crust. 
And don't forget to stop in our sports bar, where we're proud to feature the Valley's largest selection of beer, 115 from around the world. We're located at the corner of Broadway and Roosevelt in Tempe, 530 West Broadway. Fall League Baseball on Cox Sports comes your way Thursday, October the 31st. Sun City's the Solar Sox and the Phoenix Desert Dogs go at it 7 o'clock. And you'll see that game on Cox Sports. We hope you'll join us for that one. Here at Bruce Harper Stadium, 226 to go to halftime. Tempe leading Coronado 7-6. Tempe looking to the third and nine. This is a big play right here. If the Dons can hold, they get good field position. Pass, out passes, hit incomplete. Good hit that time by Mike Mantle. Intended receiver was Mixon, and Mantle let him have it as soon as he touched the ball. Well, Mantle saved the first down. The Buffaloes had it. Mixon had the ball in his hand and was beyond, was beyond the marker. And Mantle, with the jarring hit, knocks it loose, and Tempe now has to kick it away. 2.22 to go till halftime. And Bond's going to have to punt this ball. He's going to take the snap at about his own five. Where does his back deep? Fourth down, nine to go, Tempe. Snap to Bond. Don's tried for the block with Bennis, didn't get it. Huerta coming over to field the punt. Huerta looking for running room. Huerta cuts it back down the field. He's down to the 41. Nice run back by Joel Huerta. Gives the Don's good field position. You have to wonder how in the world Bennis missed it. He was all over that kick, and somehow the ball got away. So Huerta's run back. Puts the ball on the 41 of Tempe. The last time Coronado had the ball, was on a Mike Mantle interception at about this same place. But they wound up losing yardage, and on penalties, they had to give the ball back to Tempe. Now the Dons have it back, 2-11 to go to halftime, with a chance to try and drive it down and take the lead before the half. Nick Poole at quarterback. Give the ball off to Huerta. Mano leading the blocking on a sweep. Penalty mark is down, and Huerta's down inside the 40. We may get a hold, we'll see. It looked as if what? Or a clip. Washington came up from his linebacker position and somebody put a hand on him. It looked, yep. It is a hold. And again, a big penalty hurts the Dons. They had a 10-yarder before, which backed them up, and they're going to get backed up again here. 2.05 to go. I'm trying to think if it was the Chaparral game, and it may have been last week in the game between Coronado and Chaparral, which Coronado won 34-28. The Dons were penalized heavily in that ball game, and Joe Court was not happy when it was all over, and he chose his words very wisely in some post-game comments, but he was not happy with the total number of penalties called against his ball club. Minute 51 at the 49 of Tempe. Pool, play action, rolls left, throws back, got a man, Huerta, Huerta cuts it back to the middle of the field, and he's down to the 40-yard line. Fumble. He fumbled the ball, yes. Tempe says they have it, and they do. At the 41 or 42, Tempe recovers the fumble. Justin Taplin. Taplin returned a fumble for a touchdown against Thunderbird, returned another fumble for a touchdown against Gilbert, and he had a pass interception against Gilbert. Now he recovers a fumble here. So Coronado's had their chances here in this first half, and here they give it up. When Huerta makes the catch right here, it looks as if he's about to go down, but he runs right by one tackler, a couple, and then loses the ball. Might have been Tua who hit him. Mortensen wants to throw, gets it out to Taplin. Complete nice catch to keep his feet in bounds. At the 48 of Coronado, that's a first down. That's a pro catch right there by Justin Taplin. Dragged the feet, kept him in bounds, and now he's holding his wrist. This is an important series for Coronado. The Dons are hanging in there. The last thing they want to see is Tempe go back on the scoreboard right before halftime, when actually Coronado just seconds ago was in position, if not to score, at least to run out the clock. So Taplin on the pass play takes it to just inside the 48 of Coronado. That's a first down. And in the ball game comes Jarvis Watkins with a play from the sideline. Mortensen looking over. Todd Mortensen, son of the great Fred Mortensen, who quarterback here at Tempe. Let's go, let's go. 
Boy, has he got great size for a quarterback. 6'4", 200 pounds. Halfback option. Watkins wants to throw. Let's it go. Back on defense, and the ball knocked away. Mantle was back on coverage. As that time, they try to hit James Stewart down the field. Good coverage by Coronado. For a moment, Mantle was beaten, but he recovered very nicely. So the halfback option pass stops the clock. Minute 24 to go now. Well thrown ball by Watkins. Running back lets it fly. And right there, incomplete. Second down, 10 yards to go. Mortensen, falling signal. Quick drop, out pattern is complete. And out of bounds goes Stewart, the 5'10 senior. Gonna be short of first down yardage. It'll bring up third down and probably five or six yards to go for a first down. But it stopped the clock getting out of bounds with 119 to go. Seven to six, Tempe leads. Tempe, the first time they touched the ball in this game tonight, drove 62 yards in 10 plays. Mortensen hit Taplin for the touchdown pass. Steve Thompson, the extra point to make it 7-0. Don's got on the board. Driving over 60 yards, and Nick Poole snuck it over from the one to make it 7-6. Mortensen drops, looking for a receiver. Going to get in the way and just throws it out of bounds. Pressure that time, put on for Coronado. Hard to see who it was. I will tell you one thing that Joe Court told us before the ball game. They are down so far in numbers. There's only 24 Don suited up for this game. You see 77 right there. There's no 77 on the roster. He told me earlier this week, several of the Dons are going to have to change jerseys from offensive numbers, backfield numbers, to lineman numbers. And that's why we're going to be caught off guard a little bit in this ball game. The other thing is a couple of tackles that are out and are being replaced by players that he said should really be on the junior varsity. That might be Brett Treble. He threw 82 on the back of the helmet, and Treble goes both ways as a defensive end and an offensive tight end. That incompletion makes it fourth down and six for Tempe. A minute 13 to go. Coronado and Tempe. Coronado leads the all-time series 14 to nine. The last time they met, October 20th, a year ago, on the field at Coronado, Tempe came away with a 21 to seven win. That was Tempe's first win over Coronado since their quarterfinal playoff win against the Dons in 1989. Coronado had won five in a row over Tempe up until that game a year ago. It is fourth down. Dave Bond will stand back to punt. His first two punts, 33 and 36 yards. So he's right near his average tonight, which is about 34 and a half yards a punt. Snap down, kick on the way. Huerta is back, and he will let this one bounce, and it takes a Coronado bounce back up the field. Goes out of bounds at about the 17-yard line. So 105 to go to halftime. Coronado has it back. First down from their own 17. Next week. Brophy, St. Mary's, the annual battle from Phoenix College. What a game it should be. Brophy, as of right now, ranked second in the state behind Mountain View. They haven't beaten St. Mary's in the last 16 meetings. They feel this may be their shot. You see the playback times on Cox Sports. That should be a good one. There'll be a mob at Phoenix College next week. If you're planning on going, get there early. Nick Poole up the middle. And as soon as Mantle touched the football, down he went. We're going to just let the clock run out, I believe, and go to the locker room with this score. No gain on that last carry. It'll be second down coming up. Under 45 seconds to go to halftime. Stay with us again. The editor of Phoenix Metro Football, Barry Sollenberger, will visit with us at halftime. 7-6, to six, Tempe on top, trying to stay unbeaten. Where do the handoff? Gets away from a couple of tacklers and then is knocked down inside the 15 with 20 seconds to go. 
So they will not have to snap it again. And these two teams can head to the locker room, and that might be what they do. No, timeout going to be called by Tempe. It's third down and 10. 16 seconds to go. Quickly through is Tua, and Tua almost made the tackle. While we have a timeout, let's mention some numbers. On the great defensive tackle, Michael Tua, Tim McBurney told us he was the tongue in terror before the ball game. Tua had four sacks against Saguaro, six tackles, two sacks, a forced fumble, and a fumble recovery in the win over Thunderbird. He has four fumble recoveries and eight and a half quarterback sacks this year. Michael Tua. 5'10", 200-pound senior, good defensive tackle. Tempe's defense has been solid all year. Doug, you were telling me you had looked in the, the newspaper this week and saw that other than Sabino, Tempe's given up probably the fewest points of any 4A school. That's right. Uh, among 4A schools, the only team with a better defense in terms of allowing points is, is Sabino down in Tucson, Tempe number two. And in fact, they are the only two teams in 4A shown to have allowed fewer than 100 points to this time of the season. Final 16 ticks of the clock here in the first half. Cool. Gives the Mantle. Fumble and Mantle got it back. Oh, that could have been disastrous for the Dons. Mantle, presence of mind to get the ball back after fumbling it out over the 16. That's why you call a timeout with 16 seconds to go when you're on defense. Something like that, Tempe may have had a shot at the end zone. It is halftime at Bruce Harper Stadium, the campus of Tempe High. This East Sky Region battle, our score. The Buffaloes of Tempe, seven. The Dons of Coronado, six. Stay with us. Halftime activity is next on Cox Sports. If you're a member of Flight Fund, America West's worldwide frequent flyer program, this is the kind of place your miles will take you. To be fair, frequent flyer miles on other national airlines will also take you here. The difference is, with all the money you save accumulating our miles, you'll have a lot more to spend when you arrive. America West. It seems silly to pay more. For reservations, call your professional travel agent or America West. your children's education. If it was anything to do with your money, we're going to tell you about it. CNBC has managed to bring what's happening on Wall Street to Main Street. Good news if you're thinking of traveling by car. Surrounding Donna Karen is certainly hot. But when you cover the stuff that we do, it matters to everybody. You need to know what's going on. We help you learn it. It's not just stocks and bonds. It's about your life. Keep an eye on your money. Watch CNBC on Cox Cable. Wish you could boogie like this? You can! Learn to dance the easy way with Oscar and Felix. Nick at Night's classically trained duo will teach you the latest steps. The tango, the bunny hop, belly dancing, Greek dancing, cheek to cheek, modern interpretive, and more. Dance, dance, dance with the odd couple. Weeknights at 11.30 on Nick at Night. It's the footloose fun of the odd couple. Only on Nick at Night and Cox Cable. Half time again of our game tonight between the Dons of Coronado and the Buffaloes of Tempe. I'm George Allen. Barry Sollenberger, the editor of Phoenix Metro Football, joins us once again. We are now advancing near the end of the regular season. Remember now, Class 4A, the regular season will end one week prior to the end of the regular season of Class 5A. So 4A getting near the end of the season. So these games from here on out, very, very critical for everybody. 
Let's turn to 5A for a minute, Barry. A team we've touched on a little bit this year, not very much. They haven't had a great deal of success in football over the years, but this year they're raising some eyebrows. Carl Hayden, they won again last week. Uh, patience pays off, I guess, boy, but this is the extreme. You know, 10 years ago, George, I think Carl Hayden lost over 40 games in a row before they won a game. I think they beat Casa Grande in a game about a decade ago. And they've really struggled in football. That's never been their strong point, that sport, since the late 50s. But it's really ironic. You know, they have good athletes on that campus. That's evitable when you watch basketball games. Um, I mean, that's obvious when you watch basketball games. And, and somebody has got more kids. The new coaching staff's got more kids out for football. It's a numbers game, as we all know, especially in 5A level, no matter what region you're in. And it's paid off for them. They got some good athletes on the football field at Carl Hayden now, and it's paid off. The spirit <coughs> back at Carl Hayden. Uh, one game that had to be an extremely emotional matchup last Friday night was the game over at Horizon at Husky Stadium, where the Horizon Huskies entertained the Wolves of Chandler, and of course that game coming off the death of Jerry Loper. That had to be tough for both teams. I was going to say the same thing you just did, George. That's really tough for both teams. Um, well, you're in a situation like that that you just don't want to get into very often. Uh, Horizon, again, looks like on the field, they've struggled in September, but they come on strong in October and November when it really counts. And that, that, that looks like what's happened out there in Scottsdale right now. They had a big backyard uh, a rivalry a week ago over in Gilbert between Gilbert High School, which will be moving up next year a classification. And they went over and played Gilbert Highland. And Highland really seems to have it going. We saw them early this year when they were beaten by Mountain Point, but that's their only loss this year. They've beaten everybody since then, and they rolled over Gilbert 60 to 13. There is not a lot of consistency right now in the play from week to week with Gilbert. I mean, the week before, I, I think it was the week before or two weeks before. They had beaten Coronado. Yeah, they beat a good 4A football team, Coronado, and, the, and I know there's not that much difference in, in a point spread in the good 4A and the good 5A teams, George, but then the next week they turn around and give up 60. So... They need to be a little more consistent to be a little more competitive than they've been recently. One team that has been consistent this year, but it's been the wrong way, has been Westwood. Westwood has made the playoffs for the last 10 or 11 years consecutively. They will not make it this year. The Warriors winless. They were beaten by Mesa last week, and they are 0-6. You know, um, well, I guess if you stay in the profession long enough, you're going to have seasons like this come around. But... This is uh, the worst start that Westwood High's ever had in football. Westwood George played their first varsity football game in the fall of 1963 with an all-junior team. They had no seniors, and they won six ball games. So even that team that had no seniors got off to a better start than they're going through right now. But that coaching staff has proven themselves in the past. No and question. And they've had good teams in the past, and they'll have good teams in the future because a couple of their underclassmen teams are having decent seasons. It's interesting you mentioned that. 1963, when they played with Junior, they came back the next year, and they won the entire thing. Went undefeated, won 12 or 13 games in the fall of 64. Uh, that, like we said, that's right after the school opened. Those teams were, were coached by the late, great Edgar Mutt Ford. And in that 1964 championship game, they beat Camelback coached by the late Don Baker, who, of course, was a coach under Frank Cush over at Arizona State. Uh, some other games from, uh, from a week ago. How about Red Mountain? Red Mountain's a team we've talked about during the course of the year. Surprised a lot of people, quietly went along, not losing a ball game. Finally suffered their first loss last week against Dobson. You know, a or just a little while ago, I mentioned about how the pattern recently with Horizon has been that they have struggled in September and played strong in October and November. The pattern with Red Mountain, unfortunately for Red Mountain fans, has been just the opposite. They've played pretty, always played pretty good in the first month of the season and then faltered down the stretch. And for, for their sake, let's hope that doesn't happen right now. But uh, they didn't get off to a real good start in league play by, by losing to a Dobson team that I believe the week before got shut out real bad by Phoenix St. Mary's. By a score of 34 nothing in a game that we televised. One team that obviously is for real here in 1996 the Owls of Awa Freya, they knocked off Peoria last week, and they continue to roll. I think they're 5-2 and two now. If you know anything about the history of Arizona high school football, that school out in Avondale has been strong in football, George, for 30 years or more. Uh, they've struggled in recent years for whatever, whatever internal problems or whatever reasons, but the, boy, they look like the real deal. Like you said, they lost their opener. I don't think they have not lost a game since that opening game loss, I believe, to Coronado. That's right. I believe that's who beat them. That's right. They have really good athletes, good skill kids out there. Um, there's a pretty good athlete in the, in the National Football League today playing for the Minnesota Vikings. 
um, whom I think in Nevada, Arizona State, the offensive guard. Randall from, McDaniel. Randall McDaniel, yeah. who's from Awa Fria High, who ironically was an all-state tight end and a defensive end. Went to Arizona State University. They made him an interior lineman. The guy's a millionaire playing pro football. Randall McDaniel's like the third person from Awa Fria, third or fourth person from Awa Fria High, who's played in the National Football League. Um, so they've got some players out there. No question about it. Ironwood's at school that last year made it all the way to the championship game in Class 4A, and they're back again knocking at the door. They want to go one step forward and win that thing this year. But they had a very close call last week. They took on Goldwater and just did get by them. For Ironwood's sake, though, this is a real good sign, I think, George. They've made a coaching change this year and didn't skip a beat. You know, they were in the finals last year in 4A. Here they are undefeated, correct? Mm -hmm. Here we are halfway right. through or three-fourths of the way through October. There's more than just Peoria and Cactus on that west side now in 4A that are strong football programs and Awa Fria, as we talked about earlier. You have a new school like, like Ironwood, it really makes it kind of healthy, the competition on that side of town. Cortez is a school we talked about a couple of weeks ago. At the time they were undefeated, uh, Cortez now has lost a couple of games in a row. Their most recent loss came last week against Moon Valley. There's another program that had been down for a number of years. Now they seem to be on the upswing again. Cortez, George, I think after the fifth week, after they got through September and the first week in October, was the second highest scoring 4A team in Arizona behind Tucson Sabino, who's still the state's number one ranked 4A team. But then as they got into league play here, they've dropped a couple of games, and that's not a good sign for the Colts. Big game last week was up at Kingman. Homecoming for Kingman, undefeated. They were entertaining the Rams of Washington, and the roof fell in on Kingman. 61 to 37, or 60 to 37. 98 points yeah. scored, I believe. Yeah. Uh, not a good sign for Kingman, you're right. Trevor Moat, they're a really good athlete, had a good game. A.J. Brown is back. He missed a few games for Washington. He's back playing on the defensive side of the ball. Scored the last touchdown on a botched kickoff return by Kingman. Um, yeah, they've got some. That was a game that had a lot of good skill athletes. There's maybe two or three Division I uh, football prospects on the field up there when Washington and Kingman played last week. But Washington is tough. Washington doesn't have a, a, very, physical, a ver very physical line, but they sure got a lot of good athletes at the skill positions. So we wind down the final few weeks of the football season. We hope you're enjoying it, and we hope you'll be with us each and every week as we take you all the way to the championship game at Sun Devil Stadium. That'll be played the night of December 13th. Next week, we are going to be at Phoenix College, the annual showdown between the Knights of St. Mary's and the Broncos of Brophy. There should be a mob on hand for that one. When we come back from our break, we will salute this week's AIA Scholar-Athlete. We'll take a look at highlights of the first half and then get back to the second half of tonight's game, Tempe and Coronado. So until next week, George Allen for Barry Salenberger. Stay right where you are. Second half action coming up. Inside the NFL, the Emmy-winning team, I'm pumped up and primed for new opponents to cream. If I say any more, I might start to cry. So just let me wish. Happy 20th. That's all. Bye-bye. That was so beautiful. Poetry in motion. Inside the NFL, the 20th anniversary season. See it on HBO and Cox Cable. This is the woman who runs the ad agency, who fired the girl, who lived with the guy, who dated the woman, who slept with the man, who conned the mom, who abandoned the daughter, who dated the doctor, who married the psycho, who blew up the building owned by the woman, who schemed with the stripper, who worked for the shrink, who dated the woman, who runs the ad agency, the place that Heather built. Melrose Place, weeknights at 7. Let E and Cox Cable take you there. The beauty of football on TNT is that so often a man is called upon to do something beyond his capabilities. Beautiful! And he does it. Touchdown! Oh, man! The NFL on TNT, Sunday nights. Don't miss a game. A sideline seat to NFL football action is yours every Sunday night on TNT and Cox Cable. During our weekly telecast of high school football this fall, ASPN and Cox Communications is recognizing an Arizona Interscholastic Association 1996 Scholar-Athlete Award finalist. 
Tonight's honoree from the class of 1996 is Andrew Latak, a graduate of St. Gregory College Preparatory. Andrew was a member of the baseball, basketball, and tennis team. In addition, he wrote for the school newspaper and graduated with a 4.0 grade point average. ASPN and Cox Communications is proud to join the AIA in saluting Andrew Latak of St. Gregory College Preparatory High School, an outstanding example of an Arizona high school student athlete. We're back at halftime at Tempe High School, where the Buffaloes, unbeaten and ranked number two in the state, clinging to a one-point lead over the Dons of Coronado, seven to six, a missed extra point, a blocked extra point, we should say, the margin of difference right now. Before we get to some highlights in the first half, let's just quickly mention Tempe, the first time they touched the ball tonight, drove 62 yards in 10 plays. They had four first downs, and they got the touchdown pass to Taplin. Since that time, they have had four drives. They have totaled 56 yards only, only two first downs. They've had a punt three times. They've had an interception. So since that first drive, Coronado has done the job defensively, no question about it. Mr. Everything for Tempe, Justin Taplin, he has 63 receiving yards in the first half, and he scored the only touchdown. He has 12 yards on one punt return. That was the first punt return he returned in the ball game. He also has a fumble recovery to his credit. And Todd Mortensen, the fine quarterback for the Buffaloes, 8 of 11 for 85 yards on a touchdown and an interception here in the first half. So those are the key individuals. For Coronado, their great one-two running punch of Mike Mantle and Joel Huerta have been held pretty well in check by Tempe. Mantle came into the game averaging nine and a half yards a carry. He has carried 11 times for 41 yards, averaging 3.7 a carry. Huerta, who broke a 33-yard run at one point in the first half, six carries, 37 yards. That's a 6.2 average, but remember, that one run totaled 33 yards. And their entire offense, 17 carries, 78 yards for these two fine running backs. Only a four-and-a-half-yard average, well below their season average. Nick Poole has also carried the ball a few times for Coronado. So that's what has developed in the first half. Now we can take a look at the first half highlights. Key the touchdowns. First of all, when Tempe got the ball the first time, drove it down the field from eight yards out. Mortensen finds Justin Taplin, who was wide open in the end zone, his 17th touchdown pass of the year. And for Taplin, it was his 16th overall touchdown. Don's got the ball started. The drive got down to the one-foot line where quarterback Nick Poole, the junior quarterback, sneaks it in for the score. The point after touchdown was blocked, however. Mike Mantle's point after, and that's the margin of difference, 7-6. to six. Take a look at stats for the first half, and not a whole lot to choose from. The rushing totals for the two teams favor the Dons, as you would imagine. This is a, a totally rushing football team, and they've been held in check pretty well by Tempe. 94 rushing yards below the Dons' average for one half. Only eight yards passing, they don't throw the ball very much, and total yards, not a whole lot to choose from, nor is the time of possession. Each team with one turnover. So it has been a very even first half of football, and remember, Tempe had the 50-plus yard touchdown pass called back in the first half because of a penalty. So it's halftime here at Bruce Harper Stadium. It is Tempe 7, Coronado 6. We will come back with the final 24 minutes of this East Sky Region football encounter in just a moment. Who will lead the nation in rushing, passing, receiving, sacks, offense, and defense? ESPN, of course. country's best teams from all your favorite conferences. College football on ESPN. We're leading the nation. Look to the leaders for the best in college football. ESPN and Cox Cable. We want people to think about their money. Let's check the top business and financial Whether stories. it's retirement, your children's education. If it was anything to do with your money, we're going to tell you about it. CNBC has managed to bring what's happening on Wall Street to Main Street. Good news if you're thinking of traveling by car. Surrounding Donna Karen is certainly hot. So when you cover the stuff that we do, it matters to everybody. You need to know what's going on. We help you learn it. It's not just stocks and bonds. It's about your life. Keep an eye on your money. Watch CNBC on Cox Cable. 
What happens in the world of business today could affect your business tomorrow. Moneyline with Lou Dobbs brings perspective and insight to business news by providing in-depth reports and interviews with influential economic and government leaders, plus a complete wrap-up of financial markets and the big winners and losers on Wall Street. Nobody covers the world of business like Moneyline with Lou Dobbs. Weeknights, 7 Eastern on CNN. For the best in financial news, it's CNN and Cox Cable. High school football is back on ASPN for its 15th consecutive season. Follow the top teams from around the valley as they compete for playoff positions and a shot at the state title. Barry Sullenberger, editor of Phoenix Metro Football, joins us again at halftime with his comment. High school football at its best. Join us for the game of the week each week on ASPN. Back at Tempe High School, George Allen along with Doug Gerlach and our statistician Bob Corwin with a halftime score finds Tempe leading Coronado 7-6. to six. Two outstanding head coaches in this game for the Dons of Coronado, Joe Court, came to Coronado from Scottsdale High School where he was the head coach in 1975. He came to Coronado in 82. He is a graduate of St. Mary's, graduated from St. Mary's in 1965 and has taken Coronado to the state playoff six of the last seven years. You see his record at Coronado, the overall 133 wins in his coaching career. Tim McBurney of Tempe. Tim is a 1967 graduate of Tempe High School. You see him there. Graduated ASU in 71, began his teaching and coaching career at Tempe High that year. First served as a freshman coach in 71, then as a varsity assistant, returned as a freshman coach in 89, before assuming the head coaching job here in 1990. And an outstanding track coach as well. Tim McBurney, you see his record there. Remember, Tempe deferred their option to the second half at the start of the ball game. So they should be receiving the football and open on offense to start this second half. Seven to six, Tempe on top. Buffaloes, quarter finalists a year ago in the state playoffs, losing in overtime to Ironwood, 21 to 14. Coronado looking to get back to the playoffs here in 96 after going five and five a year ago. Prior to that five and five year, they had made the playoffs six years in a row. 1989, Tempe shared the state championship with Awafria, tying 10-10 in the title game. Coronado won a state championship in 76. Best finishes since that time for Coronado, 1991. Team won 11-2, lost to Awafria in the semifinals, a team headed up by Paul Fischera. The following week, Awafria beat Tucson Saguaro for the state championship. And then Coronado also got to the quarterfinal round of the playoffs in 89. And who beat them? This Tempe bunch, 28-6 in the quarterfinals. Tempe High got to the playoffs in 1990, losing in the opening round on this field to Washington High School. That Tempe team finished 7-4. So set to go at the start of the second half. Remember next week, St. Mary's and Brophy. Jeremy Bennis sets the ball on the tee. Taplin back deep, along with Jarvis Watkins. You know, if you're Coronado, you don't want to kick to Taplin. And if you are Tempe, you don't want to put the ball in Huerta's hands on kick and punt returns. So here we go. The winner of this game takes a giant step toward the East Sky Region Championship and a playoff berth. Venice rolls this one down the middle of the field. It's going to take a high bounce and comes into the hands of Andre Mixon. And Mixon finds room to the outside and is pushed out of bounds. Way up near midfield, right at midfield. So Tempe gets great field position to start the half. You know, we have seen both teams now tonight kick off, trying to keep the ball away from men on the opposite side who can who can break long plays. And, and what they wind up doing is surrendering good field position. Absolutely. It happens so often. The ball right at midfield. Great place for the Buffaloes to start their offense. Mortensen leads them up. 
17 touchdown passes on the year. Washington and Shaw on the backfield. Quick drop, Mortensen, pump fakes, looks, throws, throws it away. Well, first of all, he had two men, two receivers standing almost side by side with one another. Somebody apparently ran, uh, misran the pattern, but he had 83 Castile over there on the near sideline, along with 23 Trujillo. He pumped once uh, as if he wanted one of them to start hitting up field, and neither one of them did. Treble and Wood applying some pressure that time. Ronning goes out of the ball game. And Silver coming in. Second down, 10. Kaplan split far side of the field. Trujillo the near side. Mortensen looks, throws over the middle. He's got Trujillo, knocked down by Mantle inside the 40. First down, Tempe. 14 yards on the pass play. Mortensen to Trujillo. First two plays of the second half, and the Buffaloes come out throwing. Put that on a line. Mantle losing his footing momentarily. 7-6. Tempe on top. Opening moments of the second half. Hand the ball off to Washington. Brian Allen drops him also in there. Was number 82, Brett Treble. Treble, I believe it's Treble, was wearing 77 as a jersey defensively. As 82 on the back of his helmet, which is Treble, 82. There is, again, no 77 on the Coronado Don roster. Gain of a few, second down, call it seven. Sean knocked down. I don't know if that was Wood or Bennis that knocked him down, and Wood is slow getting up. I think it was Wood. They Just kind of hit him with a shoulder yep. to knock almost, him off balance. Almost ran by him, but it made enough contact to knock him down. It is third down. Third down coming up and about five to go for Tempe. Their opening possession of the half. End of the ball game comes Jarvis Watkins. Cameron Jackson comes out. Third and five from the Coronado 32. Mortensen trying to reset. Watkins and now a penalty marker is down. I think it took too much time. That was a, they were awfully slow getting to the line. And this is gonna make it third and 10. And back it up to the 37. <laughs> Tempe's opening drive of the football game resulted in their only points. It has been a tough defensive battle between two good football teams, Coronado and Tempe. Third and 10, Mortensen, quick drop, throws it out. He's got his receiver, Mike Washington, and Washington is submarined and down by Werta, shy of first down yardage. He's down at the 30. It's gonna bring up fourth and about three. And we mentioned not much of a kicking game on the part of either team. They'll go for it here. There's, there's really no risk to doing so. This is an interesting play. They swing Washington out of the back. You watch Trujillo, 23. He'd been split wide to the left side, comes in, throws a block, and helps Washington pick up a couple extra yards. That was Jeremy Bennett, 71, got his arms in the air and just missed, batting that pass down. We've played two and a half minutes of the third quarter. It's a fourth and three for Tempe from the Don 30-yard line. They reset the backfield, and quickly a timeout is called. No. Or is it a... Another delay against another delay against Tempe. So now it's fourth and nine. They're shooting themselves in the foot. They really right are. A couple of penalties here on this drive, which has set the Buffaloes back. Again, Hank Mancini's crew running this one tonight. Hank Mancini, Lynn Porter, Alan Montoya, Harold Foote, and Ken Wolf. The officiating group tonight. Ball now back on the 35. Fourth down, nine to go. Buffaloes have it. Passing situation, play action. Mortensen wants to throw, gets it away down the field, and it is caught, and out of bounds to the 15. Mantle was turned around on the play, and Trujillo made the catch. Oh, what a big play by Tempe. First of all, I mean, several things went right on that play, believe it or not, for Coronado. One, 
the Don's got some pressure on Mortensen. Watch how he has to throw the football. He is off balance and just throws this up. The second thing that went right is Mantle was out of position, got back into position to make the play, only to find that the ball was underthrown a little bit. Trujillo was able to come back and make the catch. Huge play right there on fourth and nine. Now it's first and goal. Look in pass incomplete. They wanted to hit Taplin. That We're looked as if it cover. slipped out of his hand. He threw that one right into the ground. A look in for Taplin, well underthrown, and Mortensen had to just... That ball got away from him. He looks to the sideline now. Second down, goal to go from the 10. On a fourth and nine, Mortensen off the back foot hits Trujillo on a bomb to the 10. Trujillo, three catches, 54 yards now in the ball game. Second down, give it to Washington. Mike Washington up the middle, has got it down to the five. It'll be third and goal from the five. Mortensen, 12 of 16 for 131 yards, one touchdown, one interception. Clock running, 8.55 to go, third quarter. Watkins checks in, Shaw comes out for Tempe. Third and goal from the five. Opening drive, second half for Tempe. They took their first possession in the first half and stuck it in the end zone for a touchdown. Trying to duplicate that to start the second half. Mortensen, quick drop, out pass, uh -oh. it is picked off! It is picked off by Coronado! And run back out over the 30 to the 35-yard line. Is that Kraxberger? Yes, it is. Yes, Josh Kraxberger. Oh. oh, he read that perfectly. Huge turnover. He gets it back over the 30-yard line. Big interception by Kraxberger. The Tempe was trying to swing. It looked as if it was Trujillo out of the backfield. There is in Washington. No, it's Trujillo. That wasn't close. It was thrown a little bit behind him, although you never know because the ball didn't get close. Kraxberger right there in between Mortensen and Trujillo, and a big play for Coronado. It was Mortensen that ran him down for the tackle. Now the Dons get it back. Mantle trying to swing wide. Mantle finds room. Mike Mantle, he's going to go. He's at the 35. Mike Mantle, touchdown Coronado. Can you believe this? Tempe is at the five-yard line. What? 20 seconds ago, ready to go in for a touchdown to extend its lead, and now Coronado has taken the lead. Two 66 plays. yards on the run by Mantle. Oh, what a turnaround in this football game. Sixty-six yard run by Mantle. Yeah, but how about this number, George? They intercepted the pass at the three-yard line. 97 yards in two plays. So Trim P driving down the field. Gets a fourth down completed pass to give them first and goal at the 10. They get it to the five on a run by Washington. A pass interception by Kratzberger, running it back 30 yards, and then Mantle breaks one 66 for the score. Now they'll go for two. Poole leads them up. Play action. Looking for the open man. Throwing, and this one picked off by Taplin. Penalty marker down, and Taplin is dropped outside the five. May get a hold. We'll see. Roughing the, Roughing passer. the passer against Tempe is going to give Coronado another shot. Boy, turnarounds in this football game. Holding would, would, would not have made any difference, but this gives the Dons another shot at it from the one-yard line. Poole's pass was picked off by Taplin on the try for the two, but they call a roughing the passer call penalty against Tempe. This will give the Dons another shot. I to, got, I'll you tell to, you a little truth. I got to expect them to try and run this football in. Oh, absolutely. Two points. They're at the one-yard line. When you got two backs like Huerta and Mantle, you go with your strength. And I think Tempe's expecting the same thing. Bull's going to keep. Will he get there? No. He did not get there. The try for extra point, no good. And with 8.13 to go. Third quarter. It's Coronado 12, Tempe 7. Well, we had mentioned how Tempe had held both Mantle and Huerta well in check in the first half. 
But this is what these two backs can do to you. On one play, Mantle busted 66 yards for a score. There's a long way to go in this football game, but those extra points could prove very costly before this is over. Well, if nothing else, this will wake Tempe high up. Tempe started the first half with a nice 10-play, 60-plus yard drive, and then really didn't do much the rest of the half offensively. Here in the second half, they take the kickoff. They're moving down the field. They are in the shadow of the goalpost, and just like that, they fall behind on two plays, an interception and a long run. You know, Tempe has had some games this year, most notably against Saguaro, second game of the year, where they trailed at the half at Saguaro, came back to win. The Gilbert game, they were coasting 35-7, hung on for a 35-34 win, and had a very tough game on this field against Chaparral, prevailing 28-20. Tough games, but they won them all. Coronado's only loss was against Gilbert. Line drive kick gonna come down to Taplin. Taplin's gonna get a shot to run this one back, and Taplin starts up the middle. Look out, he bounces away, and is out over the 35 to about the 37, where Tempe will go to work first, and you know, somebody like Taplin, he might might be just as well off by kicking the ball out of bounds and taking the penalty. Of course, the ball that goes out of bounds, if you can kick it out of bounds to the right spot, you get it to the 35-yard line, you're not going to do much worse than, than letting Taplin return kicks. But Coronado had that pretty well recovered, and he just sort of picked his way through and almost got himself in a position where there was nobody left. First and 10 Buffalo from their own 37. Quick drop, Mortensen. Quick out pass, penalties fly. And we'll get this one brought back. Bond on the receiving end of that quick out pass by Mortensen. And the officials huddling up. Clock shows 8.01 to go, third quarter. Coronado leading. Procedure against Tempe. Back him up five, make it first and 15. Coronado trying to spoil parents' night for Tempe. Penalty situation, nine penalties, 42 yards for the Buffaloes, two penalties, 21 yards for Coronado. Well, four in this half against Tempe. Yeah, penalties have hurt the Buffaloes. Pitch it back to Davis and another penalty marker down. Welton Davis taking that pitch. So Coronado. Coronado saying it's against us. Somebody may have lined up offsides. Yep. That's it. So they get the five back. Tempe taking the opening kickoff of the second half started at midfield. They marched to the five-yard line of Coronado, and then Josh Kraxberger intercepted Mortensen, returned the ball 30 yards to the 34-yard line of Coronado. And on the first play from scrimmage, Mike Mantle went 66 yards for a touchdown to turn a 7-6 deficit into a 12-7 lead for the Dons. Now Tempe, out at their own 37. Mortensen hands to Davis, who gets away from one tackler, then is converged upon and dropped at the 40. Bennis had the first shot at him, slowed him down before the help came after a gain of about three. Lelton Davis, six feet, 190, he is a senior. Came into the game with 182 yards rushing on the season. Coronado. Wins over Awafria, Thunderbird, Westview, Apache Junction, Glendale, and Chaparral. Their only loss to Gilbert High. Tempe has run the table so far. Wins over Washington, Saguaro, Thunderbird, Gilbert, Chaparral, Apache Junction, and Desert Mountain. Sweeping and getting knocked down on a good tackle up and around the 45-yard line was James Stewart. Brian Allen with a terrific tackle. If he doesn't make the stop right there, it's an easy first down for Tempe and a lot more. Allen, a linebacker. 120 tackles another. The right hole there. Is there, and Allen puts him down. It's going to be third down and three from the 44. 6.45 to go third quarter. 12-7 Coronado. Mortensen starts Davis in motion. Handoff and a first down. Second effort. Was there a loose ball? No. 
But you're right, George, it was second effort. Coronado had him stopped short of the first down. He would not go down, and with an extra lunge, he is able to pick up the first down. Good effort by James Shaw. Watch this. He is hit there. Right there. Short That's of not the first a first down. down. That is good effort. Shaw, 11 carries, 33 yards. Tempe keeps the ball from their own 49, first and 10. Hand the ball off again. Breaking out of the pack is Shaw, and Shaw is down inside the 40. And he loses the ball, but Mortensen picks it up, and he's dragged down at the 24. Penalty marker is down, but a big game for the Buffaloes. I think Justin Tamplin is going to be called for an illegal block at about the 38-yard line. Watch this play again. It is an illegal block. Shaw breaks out of traffic into the secondary, gets hit now, and loses the ball, but Mortensen is right there to scoop it up. And Taplin's block, we should have pointed out, you could see it on that replay. But he blocked in the back just moments before the ball came loose. We're watching the ball come loose. Taplin is in the lower part of the screen, and he gets flagged for the block. Play reminded me a little bit of the immaculate reception. Huh? When the ball <laughs> popped up in the air, and here on this one, on a fumble, boy, Mortensen was right there. Don't watch, don't the, watch the ball. Watch number one over here, a block right in the there. back. Yeah. And that's why it's still first down. And about what, 12 to go? First and 12. Ball back in Tempe territory. Mortensen drops, throws, out pass is complete. Pass complete out there to Stewart. James Stewart, the 5'10 senior. Gain on the play of about three or four yards. Gonna be second down coming up. They have had such success throwing the ball to Justin Taplin. You're always thinking in the back of your mind, it's just a matter of time before they're going to come back to Taplin. Taplin has the only touchdown tonight for Tempe. A reception from Mortensen in the first quarter. Mortensen wants to throw. Down the middle, going to be picked off. Intercepted and heading back up the field. John Williams. It's John Williams. And Williams is back over the 35 to the 38. Another interception. That's the third of the night against Mortensen. Mortensen looked as if he wanted to go over the middle. The receiver wasn't there. And then he saw Williams break free. And Williams was free for a moment. But the pass doesn't get there. John Williams, 5'11", senior, 165, brings it back to the 38-yard line. Call it the 39. First down, Dons, leading by five. Nick Poole calling signals. Poole gives to Werda. Werda dancing, looking for room, skirts through and gains about three after almost being dropped for no gain or a possible loss. The Davis, number 91, had him stopped in the backfield. But Huerta was able to wiggle free and pick up a couple of yards. What a great story this kid is, Joel Huerta. You look at the last play. Huerta forced to fill in last year, really, for Mike Mantle, who was suspended for the season for rules violation. Huerta was only a sophomore last year. All he did was fill in and rush for 1,300-plus yards and 17 touchdowns. Poole on a bootleg, going to keep rolling right. Nick Poole, Poole fighting for yardage. And he's out over the 40 to about the 43. Greg down there. It'll be third down coming up as Joe Court looks on. He and his staff have done a fine job getting his club ready for this key matchup as he has his final words before sending Nick Poole out. Only 24 Dons suited up for this football game tonight. They have given a superb effort. A lot of kids, almost everybody, going both ways tonight. Third down, six, Coronado. Cool. Looking for time. Penalty marker down. We're going to get a hold on Coronado, I'm almost sure. poole has got all kinds of running room, but this is coming back. It's down to the 40-yard line of Tempe, but this one's going to come back. The flag was dropped as Poole was looking for some time. 
and Nick is slow getting up. And believe me, with the numbers as small as they are, Joe Court can ill afford anybody going down. As a matter of fact, Joe told us before the game, his two best offensive linemen are standing over on the sideline in street clothes. One of them, Trevor Hinton, is an all-league performer, and the other, Wes Timmons. Neither one of them playing because of injuries. Well, the Dons are going to have to use a new quarterback at least for one play. Yeah, Poole's still down over there on the sideline, and this one's coming back. It'll be a 10-yard mark-off on the hold and really put the Dons way back. Take a look to see if we can... Yeah, I thought right there he had handed the ball off momentarily. Held, held it well. The flag has not been thrown yet. Good, good job right by there. a crew right there. You see the arms hooked up. That's an easy call and a good one. So, let's see who they send in at quarterback. Now, looks like Mike Sanguine coming in. 5'11 junior, who's going to have to run it for at least this one play. It is going to be third down coming up and a mile to go for a first down. They've got to get the ball out near the 49-yard line for a first down. The ball's on the 26. So they've got about 23 yards to go for a first down. Hand the ball off and breaking through out to the 46 was Mantle. He darn near broke another one. Can you believe it? They come in, they're within three yards of a first down. They had third and forever, and they almost pulled it off. And this one right up the middle, great blocking. Oh. Joe Wood, 54, with a sensational block in the middle of the line there. So it is fourth down and three. At least it gives them a little better punting position here for Mantle to try and kick this thing away. There's only two and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. The score is 12 to 7, Coronado leading. Tempe has not lost a football game this year. Coronado has lost but once. These teams are about to set an AIA record for most <laughs> delay of the game penalties. There's another one against Coronado. Joel Huerta heads to the sidelines. Coming into this game, Huerta had rushed for seven touchdowns, caught a touchdown pass, returned two punts, and a kickoff for a touchdown. Mantle had rushed for 13 touchdowns, caught a touchdown pass, and kicked 17 points. Mantle, high snap, nice punt. Kaplan gonna get a shot of the return. Feels the football, gets away from a couple of would-be tacklers, still on his feet, and now he's swarmed under, back at about the 23-yard line. So it'll be first down, good coverage by Coronado that time on the punt. Not allowing Taplin any running room. 2.01 to go, third quarter. Dons with a five-point lead, Tempe to the offense. Todd Mortensen has been picked off three times tonight. He came into this game having suffered five interceptions all season through seven games. Taplin, wide far side. Shaw, Washington running back. Shaw behind Washington block. Shaw breaks out in the open. Shaw breaks to the outside. Shaw has a first down and a lot more. Run down by Huerta, but not before he's out to the 45-yard line. Big game that time. Oh, he ran into a pile and looked as if he was stopped, and then all of a sudden he's the one who comes out of there, and there are very few left for Coronado to try to stop him. 21 yards on the run by Shaw. Right here, he's jammed up, bounces off. Huerta does a nice job of avoiding a tackle to keep his feet and get himself in position to make the tackle. Big game for the Buffaloes. First and ten. Give the ball off. Shaw again Look at the running room this way. There's nowhere to go. Allen again, who's played a solid game at linebacker tonight for the Dons, in to make the stop. James Shaw, he is a senior. Had a big game a week ago against Desert Mountain in the overwhelming win for Tempe, 54 to three. Shaw ran for 110 yards and a touchdown a week ago. Tonight, 14 carries, 66 yards. Shaw went for over 100 yards, had a 48-yard touchdown run in the win over Apache Junction. 
Timeout call, Tempe. Clock shows 102 to go third quarter. Time out of the field. Coronado 12, Tempe 7. College football coming your way on Cox Sports. And a lot of it on November 3rd. Triple header. Cincinnati kicks it off. Playing at Southern Miss. 1 o'clock that game live. Then there'll be college football. Stanford at UCLA. That game at 4.30 coming up on Cox Sports. And NAU, the Lumberjacks. Boy, what a year they're having. Hosting Idaho State at the Dome. 8 o'clock live. Triple header. College football here on Cox Sports. Heck of a game we've got here at Bruce Harper Stadium. Tempe High, Joe Court patrolling the sidelines. I'm sure checking on Nick Poole to see how his quarterback is. Nick went down on the last possession after a big run that was nullified by a penalty. Mike Sanguin had to come in and run one play at quarterback, and we'll see if Poole comes back in the next time the Dons get the football. Right now, it's Tempe's ball. Second down, 11 to go. George Poole is still on the bench over on the Coronado side with a couple of people around it. Second and 11. Mortensen wants to throw. Looking for time, feeling some pressure, getting it away, and it is out of bounds, incomplete. Bennis was applying pressure and making Mortensen throw where he didn't want to and got him to throw incomplete. 54 seconds to go, third quarter. That play was intended, first of all, to go to Taplin. He was split wide to the left side. Mortensen looked over there. Taplin was angling across the middle, but 43 Jeff Silver really had him jammed up, and Taplin was not able to run a very good pattern at all in the play, so Mortensen had to look elsewhere. There's Nick Poole. That's not a over good sign. Over the sideline, he's being taped up. Around the shoulder, we'll see if he comes back. Mortensen throws it over the middle, completes the pass. And that is going to be very close to first down yardage. They're going to get a good spot on this. They got a very good spot. Trujillo on the receiving end of Mortensen's bullet. And I think he's got the first down. Let me see now. See if my eyes deceive me. Boy, I don't know. This is going to be awfully close. I'm going to say he missed it by an inch. Well, we'll see, won't we? And he'll bring it into the 44. Mortensen's had some big games this year. Threw for 240 yards and four touchdowns in the win over Saguaro. Threw three touchdown passes in the win over Thunderbird this year. And also threw for 237 yards and two touchdowns in the win over Gilbert. Chains coming out. Mike Washington says it's a first down. They stretched the chains. He got it by about six inches. So I was off by about seven. <laughs> Not bad. Not bad. 47 seconds to go. Third quarter. Less, 10 feet first down. Less than a ruler. <laughs> so on third down, Mortensen bails him out with a first down pass completion to Gabe Trujillo. Or Trujillo receiving the pass. He's had a pretty decent ball game tonight. Hand the ball off to Shaw. The boy, look at him go with second effort to get an extra yard or two. It's an overall gain of about three down to the 41. That might have been the final play of the third quarter. We'll see how quickly Tempe gets to the line of scrimmage. They don't have to snap it again before the quarter ends. That really was a good effort on the run. He was stopped at the 44-yard line. And he wound, winds up at the 41. Final five seconds. They will not get this snap away. It is the end of the third quarter here at Bruce Harper Stadium, Tempe High School. We'll go to the final 12 minutes of action with our score in this East Sky Region game. The Dons of Coronado 12, the Buffaloes of Tempe 7 back with the fourth quarter in a moment. If you're a member of Flight Fund, America West's worldwide frequent flyer program, this is the kind of place your miles will take you. To be fair, frequent flyer miles on other national airlines will also take you here. The difference is, with all the money you save accumulating our miles, you'll have a lot more to spend when you arrive. America West. It seems silly to pay more. For reservations, call your professional travel agent or America West. The beauty of football on TNT is that so often a man is called upon to do something beyond his capabilities. Beautiful! 
And he does it. Touchdown! Oh, man! The NFL on TNT. Sunday nights. Don't miss a game. A sideline seat to NFL football action is yours every Sunday night on TNT and Cox Cable. How about these for third quarter stats? Tempe ran 19 plays, consumed 848 of the clock, did not score any points. Coronado ran four plays in the third quarter, consuming 312 of the clock. They scored the touchdown, which gave them the lead. The one big run by Mantle after the big interception by Kraxberger. Mortensen looking to throw, has time, fires, got a man, and he overshot him. Had Castile, the tight end, open. Down at around the 15 and missed him on the, on the pass play. I don't know if Tempe is getting a little frustrated. Mortensen looked over to the left side on that play, didn't find anybody, then looked right, almost completed the pass. But as the ball was in the air, Taplin over here on the left side has his arms up in the air as if to say, why aren't you throwing it over here? There's the pass, had Castile and overshot him, and I'm going to be very honest with you. I'm going to ask the same question. Why is he not throwing to Justin Taplin? They have four men out on that pattern, and a couple of them were open. Huerta comes over to give double coverage on Taplin. Mortensen's going to screen on a good call. And staying inbounds and getting the first down. Down inside the 30-yard line. Coronado, one of the players indicating that he step out. No, got a first down. Good second effort that time by Jarvis Watkins. There's an official right on the sideline. It looked as if Coronado gave up on the play, thinking that he was out of bounds, or at least was going to go that way. Tempe driving for what could be the go-ahead score. They're at the Coronado 29. There it is again. And there's Ooh, some good very footwork close. by Trump. Watkins with some good footwork. And he got the first down. Hand it off on the end around. And this is Andre Mixon. And Mixon, the senior, gets good yardage on that carry. Mike Washington led out of the backfield to throw a block. Jay Mueller, the right guard, pulled on the play. They were the men occupying Coronado defenders at the line of scrimmage that helped get the ball past the line of scrimmage and for a pretty good game, about eight yards. Ball on the 22 of the Don. Second down coming up. A lot of these kids have played both ways tonight. There's got to be some tired young men down there on the field about now. Shaw on a sweep. Coronado trying to run him down, and Mantle spills him down to the round of 20. Going to come up about a yard shy of a first down. If Mantle doesn't make that play, Shaw goes a long way. You know, and Mantle was being blocked. He was occupied, and he still somehow made the tackle. Good play by Mike Mantle. Venice was trying to chase him down from the backside. Ball on the 20. We will see when Coronado gets the ball back. That injury to Poole. This is the 10th play of this drive. Shaw, first down, breaks through. Shaw being wrestled down. Allen getting help over there, but not before he got about five or six yards. Good run by Shaw. Boy, he's a hard runner. And all of a sudden, Tempe is staying on the ground, not going to the air. The Buffs have, had, have misfired through the air tonight, three interceptions. And now they're getting some hard running from Shaw and Washington. Off the right side. And Allen hanging on till he gets some help finally from John Williams. First down, Buffalo. Play action. Mortensen looking, throwing, incomplete. Huerta. Huerta on Taplin. The ball thrown a little bit high, but Huerta with good coverage on Taplin that time. Taplin has that ball in his hands. It's Huerta's hit that takes, that causes the ball to come loose and takes away the reception. This is a catch until Huerta hits it. So Huerta up from the secondary. Taplin will come out of the ball game. And coming in will be Willie Hapes. The six foot sophomore. Second down, 10 to go. Buffaloes with the ball at the Coronado 15. Coronado leading 12 to seven. And the ball at the Shaw loses his footing. Venice was there. May have ran over Washington, his own man. Allen finally made sure he was down. George, I think what happened, Washington had knocked Venice to the ground. Venice, in trying to get up, raised a leg, and that caused the trip that led to the tackle. 
Shaw tripping over Bennis's leg after Bennis had been blocked. It's going to be third down, and we'll call it third down and nine. Another big third down play. Although at this point, you figure Kempe has two right? shots yeah. at it. Mortensen drops. Oh, oh, wow. has got his receiver. Fumble the football. Scramble for it. Tempe says they got it back. Unbelievable. Hates on the receiving end. Had the first down. Got hit and lost the ball. And it bounced backwards. Well, they are lucky in that they kept possession of the ball, but they lost the first down that they had. That's right. Oh, he's wide open. Is he ever? And right there, they hit by Olsen. Knocked the ball loose, and then it bounces backwards, and they lose the yardage. Now it's fourth down. And Mortensen looking for help. They may have to spend a timeout, and they do. That's their second. We will be back to Bruce Harper Stadium. Timeout on the field, 8.38 to go in this game. Coronado leading 12-7. Your clubs, it's fourth down and about four to go for Tempe. They are deep in Coronado territory, inside the 10, close to the eight. Coronado leads 12-7. Tempe led at the half, 7-6. What do you call here? Keep it on the ground? Got a lot of three, so. four yards to go. Or I you... think I'd put this one in the air. Who I'd go to, I don't know, but I'd sure look for Taplin. Here comes the reverse to Taplin. It's wide open. Kaplan's gonna, gonna score on this one. He's gonna get to the one. He didn't get in, but he got a first down. That's where he is so dangerous. It's the first time they've utilized him tonight at a running back position or a running play from that position. Great Ex call. Excellent call. As soon as the handoff was made to Taplin and you knew the flow of the play was coming back to the near sideline, you knew they had the first down. There's nobody over here in a white jersey. The ball is on the one. It is first and goal. Tempe trying to regain the lead. That is only the ninth carry this year for Justin Taplin. They give it a Shaw. Shaw to the goal line. Touchdown, Tempe. James Shaw pushes it in. And the Buffaloes are back on top. 8-13 to go in the game. It is 13-12, Tempe. James Shaw. Now they're trying for point. Might as well go for two. You're leading by one. A one-point conversion only gives you a two-point lead, so they will go for two. Try and get the lead up to three. Play action. Mortensen looking, throwing. Got a man. Did he catch it? Yes. Was it Castile? Castile. Right and near the back of the end zone. Mantle is, is upset about the call. I think Mantle hit it as he made the catch, and I think Mantle is is thinking that when he hit him and went to the ground, he came down with the ball out of the end zone. Boy, I don't know if our cameras have any kind of an angle on that. I didn't know whether he had come down inbounds or not. Obviously, he did, and this gives Tempe a three-point lead. This is the touchdown to Shaw on the handle. But on the two-point conversion attempt, the pass went to the back line of the end zone. Castile hauls it in right there. And the official said he did come down in bounds. Mantle is saying no. Mantle is saying no, but the official said yes. 8.13 to go. Tempe on top, 15 to 12. They had a tight game on this field against Chaparral a couple of weeks ago. Came away with a 28-20 win. That was back on October the 4th. And Chaparral had the ball near the end of the game, recovering an onside kick, but couldn't score. But this is a tight one. There were some very key third down conversions on that drive. Well, and then the fumble that they recovered, they could have easily gone against them and they could have turned it over again. Remember, they already have one turnover in this half when they were on the five-yard line for it. 15 to 12. Tempe leading. Parents night. Bond with the kickoff, rolling along. 
Comes to Kraxberger. Kraxberger looking to the outside. Trying to get there and is knocked down up and around the 34-yard line. Kraxberger, who had the big interception earlier, and it's Hates that rides him down. Willie Hates with the tackle. So now the Tempe defense put to the test. And the offense of Coronado. Can they come back again to get the lead? Poole's gonna come back on. As Tempe on that last drive goes 76 yards on 15 plays. There's a great drive. 5.48 on the clock, and Shaw carries it in from the one. Poole leading them up. Blocker in motion. Picks the ball back, and Coronado's gonna get stepped off for five yards. It's gonna make it first and 15 on the penalty marker that goes down. Well, good to see Poole back in there. Yeah. Poole, who was being tended to after he went down earlier, he is back in again at quarterback. And Joe Court, from the far side of the field, sends his play in with his quarterback, junior Nick Poole. Poole has one of the touchdowns tonight, a one-yard run for Coronado. Mantle has the other on a 66-yard run, but neither extra point was converted, and right now, that is big. Here come the Dons. First down, 15 to go. Blocker motion near side. Poole, quick handoff up the middle to Mantle. Mantle lunging for yardage, and he gets almost four. Out to the 29. Or make it, I'm sorry, out to the 34. Second down, gonna be about 11 to go. Now you start watching the clock. 7.40 to go. If the Dons cannot do it on this drive, you don't know whether they'll get the ball back again. Maybe the best after this drive, maybe one more time, that's it. Poole wants to throw, looks, throws, and it's almost picked off. Blocker was not even looking, and Trujillo almost picked it off. Blocker had not even turned around. Here it is again. Now you watch where the pass goes. Good protection for him. Boy, he put it right on the spot. Blocker just, for whatever reason, did not seem to think that the ball was ever gonna come his way. He turns around for, for some strange reason, turns around, gets himself spun around, and is looking at the defender, and the ball falls behind him. It's third and 11. Now, if Coronado does not pick this first down up, they're gonna give Tempe pretty good field position on the exchange. There was moving the defense. I don't know whether they were drawn offside or not. We'll find that out momentarily. But the Tempe defensive front jumped. And Nick Olson kind of walked away, not very happy with what he heard from the officials. But now Justin Taplin's saying they're going against us. Oh, they're waving or, it off. They're waving it off. Hank Mancini, Aaron Flagg, he says, no penalty. Play the down again. Third and 11. Mike Mantle, 127 yards on 20 carries, or 132 yards on 14 carries for Mantle. Third down, 11 to go. Another big third down play, which is Coronado trying to convert. Hand it up the middle to Mantle. Mantle keeping his footing, but he only gets to the 40-yard line. He's gonna be about four and a half yards shy of a first down, and Coronado's gonna have to give it up with 6.45 to go in the game. So Mantle that time, now with 138 yards on 15 carries in the game, and a touchdown, Huerta, 39 yards on seven carries. They haven't utilized Joel much tonight. Watch the Stand him back to kick his mantle. He's gonna have to try and get a decent one off right here. 
Steps into it and gets his best kick of the night away. Fair catch, Kaplan makes it inside the 20. And Mantle really took Coronado out of a spot there. It'll be first and 10 from up at the 18-yard line for Tempe. The Coronado defense tonight has really played a good ball game. But both defenses have done well, as you can tell by the scoreboard. But yeah. Coronado against a very talented and a very skilled Tempe ball club has really hung in there. But now there's toughest task of the night. They need to get the ball back quickly. They need a defensive stop here. Mortensen's job, keep the clock running and get a couple of first downs. Joe Court looking on across the way. Tim McBurney on the near side of the field. Here come the Buffs. Kaplan split to the near side. They start a man in motion and hand the ball off to Shaw. Shaw finds a big hole, and Shaw tripped up out of the 28 or 29-yard line. Near first down yardage. That time they sneak Washington in motion and give the ball off to Shaw, who found a hole. Davis, among others, effective on the blocking it right here. It was Davis, not Washington. Yeah, right there. He throws the big block. Also a nice block thrown in there by 51, A.J. Tucker. Well, I'll tell you one thing. Tempe, with a lot of depth, they can play a lot of people. When you've got Davis and Washington at fullback, Shaw, Watkins at the tailback spot. This is Shaw. Bennis wraps him up, and he'll go down. No gain. That was second down and one. He did not get to the first down marker. It's going to be third and one. And now another big third down play. That was an excellent tackle by Bennis that time. Played a tough game defensively. He has. Kraxberger also yeah. came up. There he is, 71, Jeremy Bennis. He's on the Coronado track team, has been in past years. Field events. Third down. Short. Give it off Davis. First down. Lelton Davis running through people. And it's knocked down at the 40. That's a first down. Jeff Silver made the tackle, but not before Davis plowed through. Well, he looks like a bulldozer coming through. Really he does. He looks like a submarine in. Looks like 52 Fuentes really occupying a couple of Coronado defenders on, there on the line to help Spring Davis. Well, Coronado has timeouts left, and they may have to start thinking about spending some here. First and ten, four and a half minutes to go in the game. Tempe with the ball in the lead, and coming right up the middle for five yards is Shaw. And suddenly, Coronado's defense cannot stop the running game of Tempe. Buffaloes are now blowing the Dons off the line. They ran that play behind Munoz 76 and Mueller 75. Last week, with the score 34-28, Coronado leading Chaparral. Coronado ate up the last five and a half minutes of the clock in the game by simply running the football on about 11 or 12 consecutive plays. Chaparral never got it back. That's what Tempe's trying to do right here. Under four minutes to go. Come on. Second down. Come on. Pitch to Shaw. Shaw sweeping, cutting it back. That's first down yard to the left four. Shaw knocked down inside the 40 of Coronado. Big game by James Shaw. James Castile, 83, was out here on the end. 16 yards on the run by Shaw. Shaw cuts in behind him and goes a long way. Shaw's over 100 yards on the night. Through a Castile took two men out on that play. He blocked, he blocked two men out on that play to help Springer. Watch right here. Right there. Right there on the right side of your screen. And here goes Shaw. 109 yards on the night for Shaw, and he's got it again. Look at him plow for yardage to the 31 or 32. 340 to go in the game. And unless Coronado can do something in a hurry, they're not going to see the football again, and Tempe's going to run this clock out. Don's forced to call time, 3.32 to go, Tempe leading by three. Next week, Tempe goes down the freeway to Tucson to take on Saguaro, closes out the season in two weeks at Arcadia. Coronado plays at Arcadia next week and closes out at home against Desert Mountain. Arcadia is 2-1 and one in league play. They're going to have something to say about who wins this league because they play these two teams the next couple of weeks. We will be at Phoenix College next week. The annual battle between Brophy and St. Mary's. 
There are the replay times that you'll see that game. And remember, Brophy trying to end the streak at 16. Tempe in the second half. Look at that differential. 35 plays Tempe has run. Coronado has run seven in the entire second half. That is an amazing stat. It is in one sense misleading, however. Remember, Tempe had the ball for most of the third quarter. Coronado didn't need it for very much in the third quarter because they took advantage of their opportunities. They scored on one play. They had a one-play drive. It's amazing when you look at that stat because Coronado intercepted a pass, and on the next play broke it 66 for a touchdown. Each team has scored a touchdown here in the second half. Shaw hit fighting for yardage. It's going to be third down coming up. That was Bennis who was the first man who hit him. Ball is sitting at the 31 of Coronado. It is third down with about three to go. 3.05 on the clock and it's running. And if Tempe gets a first down here, Look out. It might also, it might al almost be lights out for the Don. Give the ball to Shaw. Shaw's got a first down. Second effort, he lunged forward and got the first down, and that might do it. That could have been the play that did it. 2.50 to go in the game. And really, they'll start the clock, and all Tempe's got to do is hold on to the ball. They are controlling. Well, they, they're going to need at least one more first down if they want to run out the clock. But right now, they are controlling the line of scrimmage and just giving it to Shaw. There, it is not a secret to anyone any longer. Shaw's getting the ball. Mortensen gives it off to Shaw. Shaw up the middle, knocked down at the 35 or the 25. And right now, Tempe really doesn't care whether or not it scores. The other thing is, even if they were to turn the ball over down here, Coronado does yeah. not throw the football, and they're going to have to throw it to get back in it. But they have shown us big play capability on the ground tonight. Ball at the 24. Coronado desperately trying to get the ball back. Tempe trying to run the clock out. Washington. Washington off the left side. Look at him lunge for yardage. He's close, too, if he doesn't have another first down. And it is just about over right here. If Tempe hangs on to the ball, this game is history. Third down coming up. I think when we talked to Joe Court before the ball game, he told us about his two tackles being out. I think he was fearful something like this happened. Remember, finally reached a point in the game where they just cannot compete on the line. Trevor Hinton and Wes Timmons, two starting linemen out. Washington first down, and that should do it. Minute 20 to go in the game. First down for the Buffaloes. And unless they turn it over, they're going to stay unbeaten, go to 8-0. The Dons are going to fall to 6-2. More importantly, Tempe's going to be 5-0 in the league. The Dons will fall to 2-2. Two two. Does, does this not wrap up the league title for Tempe? Because they have only one league game left. That's true, but our, I think Arcadia right. only has the one league That's loss right. as of tonight, and they still have to play Arcadia. Here come the Buffaloes. One minute to go in the game. Hand the ball off to Shaw. Shaw's hit and knocked down. Coronado calling a timeout. We'll stop the clock. That may be the final time. 51 seconds to go. If it's not, they only have one left. Tempe right now may want to give some thought to just taking, a couple, uh, taking the knee a couple of times. We, like Wisconsin? Yeah, it's <laughs> well, well discussed what happened with Wisconsin last week. Joe Court, his team has given an absolute superb effort tonight. Outman came in here, took the lead until the fourth quarter. And on the fourth quarter, a great drive by Tempe. And the touchdown one by Shaw put them in front. The two-point conversion made it 15 to 12. That's where we are now. It was seven to six at the half, Tempe. Tempe took the second half kickoff, drove to the Coronado five. Mortensen threw an interception to Josh Kraxberger, who ran it back to the 34-yard line, his own 34. On the next play, Mike Mantle went 66 yards for a touchdown. Coronado had the lead. They went for the two-point conversion, didn't get it. And then here in the fourth quarter, Tempe 
put together a 10-play, 76-yard drive that ate up five and a half minutes of the clock. James Shaw ran it in. They got a two-point conversion pass from Mortensen to Castile. That's where we are now with 54 seconds to play. Kempe has the ball. Second down and about six. Buffalo's ranked second in the state. Mortensen to Shaw. Shaw finds room, cuts it back. Shaw to the five. Shaw, touchdown. Did he get no. there? No, they didn't give him the touchdown. I thought he wins the ball over. They're going to put it at the one foot line. Stop the clock. Move the chains. First and goal. Boy, Shaw seemed to be bottled up, and there seemed to be some missed tackles. And suddenly he found a hole and scored it through. Now they start the clock. 29 carries, 127 yards for Shaw. His busiest night of the year. Hank Mancini's winding the clock, and they haven't started the clock yet. Now they do. Ball on the one-foot line. Kempe's going to win this game and go to 8-0. Dons are going to fall to 6-2. In a heck of a game. Two good football teams. Flags go down, maybe another delay a game. Yeah, but I, I tell you what, I think this one was deliberate. I think it was, too. I, I, the sideline of Tempe was almost motioning the Mortensen. Yeah. Hold off. Hold off. This will move it back outside the five. But Tempe could care less right now. They just want to kill the final 22 seconds. Stay unbeaten. It's Tim McBurney. Looking on. Guns. Gave it a great effort tonight, but they're going to come up a little bit short. They're going to take a knee. They're going to take what, a knee. Uh, we have just witnessed one class act. They were on the one foot line with 45 seconds to go. The game is won, and they did what a sportsmanlike team should do. They backed off and said, we don't need the points, we've got the win, and leave your opponent with a little dignity. A class act all the way around by the team in the blue and white. That's it, they will not have to go with another snap. Tempe stays unbeaten. Final score tonight from Bruce Harper Stadium in a hard-fought East Sky Region game. The Buffaloes of Tempe, 15. The Dons of Coronado, 12. Outstanding football game. Out of 24 minutes of football in the second half, Tempe held it for 18 minutes and 47 seconds. 15 to 12. Tempe with the win tonight. We will come back and visit with head coach Tim McBurney after these words. We have just witnessed a heck of a football game between two great football teams. The Buffaloes of Tempe stay unbeaten. They knock off the Dons of Coronado 15 to 12. It was 7 to 6 Tempe at the half. Coronado got the lead in the second half 12 to 7. And then finally Tempe came back in the fourth quarter, put together a great drive to win it 15 to 12. Standing by on the field winning coach Tim McBurney. And boy, Tim, this was a hard-fought football game between two great teams. Congratulations on the win. Boy, these were just two outstanding efforts tonight. Well, as I told you before the game, it was going to be a tough physical game for four quarters, and we knew that the uh, what we had to do at halftime, the adjustment we made was to start controlling the line of scrimmage and running the football better than we did the first half. That's exactly what won the football game for you because in the last quarter, you just held on to the ball and just drove it right down the field, and I thought you just kind of wore down Coronado. Well, they got a lot of kids that go both ways, and, uh, and we felt like in the fourth quarter we have, uh, at that time, we had to step up, take control of the ball game, take control of the line of scrimmage, and that was uh, the biggest difference in the ball game tonight. Tim, I'm sure you've had better offense, uh, better efforts offensively with your passing game uh, this season. Uh, were they just taking it away from you? Well, part of that, yeah, they, they did an outstanding job in coverage and uh, some looks that we hadn't seen from them. But we also uh, probably didn't make some adjustments uh, that we needed to in throwing the ball. 
and, and calling some plays and uh, didn't take advantage of the things they were giving us either. You told us before the ball game that one thing that maybe your team could stand to improve, one aspect that you could stand to improve on was your defense against the run. Now, you're up against two pretty good running backs here tonight. Given that, were you satisfied with the way you uh, defense their running game? Well, I don't ever think you're going to shut out these two backs. Uh, and, and it was evident in the second half when uh, Mantle broke that long one. We, we held them in check for the first half pretty good. But uh, you give them a whole game, and they're, they're going to get theirs. And we, I think we did a pretty good job yardage-wise and uh, containing them uh, as much as you possibly can. They're just two outstanding backs. I want to mention you're holding the trophy in your hand, our America West Player of the Game Award, which we present tonight to James Shaw who was so busy, carried the ball 29 or 30 times, and in the second half, Tim, they just couldn't contain him. He showed great second and third effort and continued to plow ahead and get some key first downs. It was an outstanding jo job by James and our O-line. Yeah. I think that was the, the real key to this ball game, and, and we talked about that at halftime, put the challenge on them. They took it to heart, and uh, we showed we have heart, and that was the difference. You know, I'm, I look up and down the schedule from 1981 till now, the records of the Tempe Buffaloes, and of course that team in 89 was such a great team, 13-1-1. One one. You right now are 8-0 oh on the season. you got to get down to Tucson next week and play Tucson Saguaro. You finish the season on the road at Arcadia. That's going to be a key league game as well. But you've got a shot to post one of the best overall records in the history of this school, and it's a team that appears, Tim, and at least offensively, to be very deep. You can use a lot of people. Well, that's what we've been trying to develop during the season here, and, and it's a credit to all the kids that uh, early on we didn't have the depth, but they've stuck it out. And we're now developing some depth at all positions offensively and defensively, and that's going to make a difference down the road. Well, great win tonight over a very gutty Coronado football team. You put yourself in the driver's seat right now for the league title. Arcadia, the only league game that's left, they started tonight with one league loss only, and they would have to run the table in order to do anything. And the way your team played tonight, it would be awfully hard to knock off Tempe. You've done a great job with your coaching staff all year long. We congratulate you. Well, thank you very much. I give a lot of credit to uh, Coach Mortensen, who's up on the booth uh, helping us with plays, and uh, our defensive coordinator, Manny Acosta, and our uh, offensive coordinator, Carl Harris. They just do an outstanding job working with these young men. Tim, congratulations on the win. Thanks for stopping by. Thank you very much, George. All right. Tim McBurney. The head coach of Tempe winning tonight. Before I go any further, I want to give a special word of thanks, if we can, to Jim Randall, the athletic director here at Tempe High School, who has just been a super individual to work with. We've known Jim for the last 15 years working over here at Tempe, and he just takes all the time in the world out to give us every bit of help he possibly can and was super this particular week. So a special word of thanks to Jim Randall. And we also want to thank the two coaches, Tim McBurney and Joe Cord, and their staff for all the help Don ends, the principal of Coronado, and to Julie Bowles here at Tempe. Been great working with these two schools. There are the final stats tonight, and if it looks so lopsided yardage-wise, it is because the Buffaloes just controlled the football so much in the second half. Yeah, and when you look at Coronado's stats, there, there is not a lot of difference between Coronado's stats at the end of the game and what we saw at halftime. Boy, you look at Tempe, ran 42 plays in the second half and ate up 18 minutes and 47 seconds of the clock. And Coronado had that one big run, the 66-yard yep. touchdown run, and other than that... That was about it for the second it half. It was three and out, yeah. yeah. So, great job. There's Todd Mortensen. You just saw him. Mortensen, although being picked off three times tonight, finally turned it on to the ground game in the last quarter, and that's what did in the Dons of Coronado. But this was a good football game tonight. Two good football teams. Uh, don't count Coronado out. They've got some work to do, and it's uh, their backs may not yet be up against the wall, but close to it. But uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see them in postseason play. If Coronado can win their final two games of the season against Arcadia and Desert Mountain, I would expect to see them in postseason play. Tempe, this is a tough bunch. they got a tough game next week against Tucson, Saguaro, and Arcadia. But this team could well go a long way in the playoff. They are currently ranked number two in the state behind Tucson, Sabino. We hope you enjoyed it. Tonight, here on Cox Sports from Tempe High, where Tempe stays unbeaten as they knock off the Dons of Coronado 15 to 12. Next week, we will take our ASPN Cox Sports cameras to Hoy Field, Phoenix College, for the annual showdown, and this one will be a dandy.
The Knights of St. Mary's will take on the Brophy Broncos. That'll be our telecast next week here on Cox Sports. Tonight, before Parents' Night here at Tempe High, Buffalo beat the Dons 15-12. For Doug Gerlach and Bob Crow, and I'm George Allen. Thanks for watching. Good night, everybody.